Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, uh, Swahili Nation viewers and all the subscribers and members of Swahili Nation and all the people who have joined us on the One Africa Forum. Uh, today it's going to be a great day. Um, this is going to be a great day today. Um, we have a lot of people that will be joining us. Uh, and we have our Minister of Education coming back again uh, to share with us uh, more about some of the topics that he has, had already uh, shared, Nati. Um, he'll be joining us very soon. Um, in the meantime, uh, feel free, guys, to subscribe. Click the notification icon, share, and join us. Feel free to join us. And um, we'll be having a lot of things to discuss tonight. Um, I know most people are now shocked. Where's Mika? Where's Mika? Uh, but Mika is around and he'll be with us. Um, so feel free, guys, to, to, uh, um, to, um, be part of this panel today as we'll still be delving more into education and uh, Africa, African affairs and African issues and African solutions. Uh, this platform is all about that. And if you, are, you feel that you have something to contribute and something that you need uh, us to discuss as the African people, as African children, as African scholars, as African academias, African people, you know, in general, <laughs> Feel free to join us today as uh, we will be having more uh, interesting topics. As you know, there will be time when we will um, open the lines and you can join and be part of this. And I know there are people that love uh, uh, posting stuff in the comment sections. Um, I always challenge the people that are always uh, putting the, the, the um comments on the comment section to join us now and then and we want to hear your voice it, it it makes it easier sometimes to really interact with somebody and hear what they have to say besides the text we can hear you the keyboards but now we want to hear the voice we want to hear you speak to us and join us in in this topics that we will be uh, delving much into and um tonight there will be so much that we uh, that we'll be uh, um, talking about. Uh, currently, um, I'm preparing for our guest for tonight, Nati. Um, he's still coming. He'll be joining us. And in the meantime, can you just you can just um, pose there where you're connecting from, and um, let's see, let's hear, let's hear. And please don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, it helps the channel and we need to keep the movement going um we as we know that we have a lot of people that sometimes join the forum but uh, are not part of the family we want you to be part of the family we are not just chasing after algorithms and all those things but we want you we want you to be part of the family uh join us speak to us uh send us an email if you've got anything that you feel that um we you, you want us you want us to discuss on one Africa official at gmail.com. So feel free, uh, family, to always uh, uh, um, um, send us your inquiries, anything uh, regarding the channel or regarding any topic. And as usual, as a family, we will be starting uh, with prayer. I know a lot of people uh, come from different backgrounds, different uh, traditions, religions and uh, feel free to join in any way that you can from wherever you are i'll also pray in the way that i know that i can communicate with my heavenly father so feel free to 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 join us in prayer as we believe in prayer in this uh, platform and we believe that we have a diverse people and people can join us in any way possible and in any uh, uh, manner that they feel comfortable so I will be opening in prayer as usual. Um, <laughs> I see a lot of people are joining, a lot of people are joining. 
Um, okay, 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 okay. So uh, feel free, guys, to join us. Uh, okay, let's, as, as, as I already said, let's join. Um, can we start in prayer? And, um, and then we'll go into other things. And there'll be other things that are coming. And I see there's a lot of things coming up. And um, we will delve into them. But for now, let's uh, join in prayer. And then I'll be welcoming our guest for tonight. And um, we'll take it from there. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this night. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your peace. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to stand in front of all these people all over the world. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we can learn from each other. We, play, we pray, Heavenly Father, that your glory, your name will be lifted high, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as we are learning, Lord, we may take steps to implement whatever we learn today. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as many people are coming in, Father, I pray, Father God, that you will remove the spirit of fear amongst them, that people will have the boldness to share and be part of this. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Oh, I think our guest is already here. Uh, Nati, I think Nati, I will be welcoming our guest here. Nati, how hello, how are you? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Nati. Yeah, I've been here for a while, but uh, every time I come in, I'm introduced as a guest there. Uh, <laughs> they said in a, 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 there is an African uh, proverb that you can be a guest for the first day, but the following day you are given a hole. Uh, you are no yes. more a guest. So <laughs> I don't know if you know that proverb, right? <laughs> in fact, in fact, uh, yeah, I think I think the word guest is 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 now um, from now from from now going on. What uh, we won't use the guest. Um, our resident, our our brother, uh, you are part of the family, Nati. I, I think I, maybe I, I that was a wrong way to to introduce you, but no, 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 you you are, you are not wrong. <laughs> you have been respectful. <laughs> Thank you. Know you how it is. Yes, uh, brother Nati. Um, the floor is yours. Uh, you are welcome. And um, I think a lot of people are are itching to hear what you have to share with us tonight. And uh, the platform is yours, uh, uh, Brother Nati. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Ezra. Um, so um, before I start my topic, one of our brother, um, Ezra, um, is saying that there is a breaking news. So we start probably with the breaking news. And I think it, this is with regard to the 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 victories that uh, the Ethiopian Defense Forces is gaining uh, in most part of Ethiopia, and I think people are so excited. And uh, the Prime Minister gave a statement that uh, uh, there is a good result from the battlefield. In as much as uh, we condone battle and killing. Um, as he himself, the Prime Minister, has said, in as much as we didn't want to fight in this forced war, we are gaining ground all over again. So congratulations uh, for the Ethiopian government. And this somehow is a war uh, against uh, so many forces. So. It's also, in a way, a good news for the rest of Africa, where different invisible hands are taking ground on this battlefield. And uh, we tried to, uh, we, are, we, are, we are grateful for the results that are coming up, and uh, let's continue the fight. Now, um, as uh, people who've been privileged to sit and discuss also Mama Africa's uh, uh, situation, uh, the battlefield. This is also our battlefield. This, this, 
this uh, streaming is also one of our battlefield where children of Africa from all over come together and discuss uh, the way forward. So uh, our today's topic uh, is African identity and Pan-Africanism. Uh, going back to the roots, African identity and Pan-Africanism, going back to the roots. Uh, by the way, uh, from a very simple Im imaginary uh, topic, back to the roots, as we know that we need to have a root to stand firm. We are standing firm if we have our roots on the ground. And this platform somehow takes us back to our roots as Africans and grounds us by being conscious of what had happened, what is happening, and what will happen in our history here in Africa. Um, there are two major points that I want to discuss today when we talk about our identity. Our identity as Africans, I must say, is marked first by colonialism. Before that, we were normal people minding our own business in whatever state of life we had find ourselves. But colonialism was the major intervention in continent Africa, where Africa was cut into pieces like a cake by the Western world. And colonialism is the first point. And the second one that has a big influence on our identity is what nowadays people talk about neocolonialism, but I would rather call it globalization because neocolonialism is the most obvious wording. I would want to use globalization and somehow uh, explain in what way glo globalization somehow is making us mere observers in the world stage. So as Africans, As Africans, we are, uh, in a way, sidelined. Mm. Um, when the Western world, during the Industrial Revolution, when scientific thought had reached its own climax in their own level, So many things have been discussed, and one of the things is just the origin of species by natural selection. It's Charles Darwin. He says survival of the fittest, and nature selects the best, and others are marked for extinction. And this scientific finding, in a way, had an effect on how the Western world looked at Africans. They looked at us Negroes as backward, as subhumans, as primitive, as illogical, emotional, and you can name it what not. That means they considered themselves as fit and naturally selected to be dominant, and the rest are Negroes, subhumans. And this somehow had big impact on how we viewed our identity, be it in Africa or Africans spread all over the world in various ways. And the Industrial Revolution, the advancement in philosophical thought and technology, so the booming economy in the West and what they did was they had to look for a manpower and Africa, this one big jungle for them, was the source of labor. So when 
they came here and hunted down men. They hunted down men who are fit for work, who are fit for plantations, who are fit to somehow cop diseases in the plantations. And these are what they call the Negroes, the subhumans. By the way, it has human, scientific, and religious connotations to it. We are subhumans, and we are not at equal par with the rest of the Western world. One, we are not, we don't have a soul. So whatever is being done to us cannot demand some kind of moral authority and moral question amongst them because they are dealing with subhumans and we are emotional, not rational. So this affected the way our identity is formed, especially during the colonial era. And by the way, we may say that the pre-colonial era has seen African at, on its own right People were leading their own lives in their own way. And this needs to be respected. But colonialism somehow became our marking, our marking, I mean, our, our, our uh, major intervention as to how our identity is somehow shaped. By the way, colonialism is the gap between the past and the present. It's mm. one chapter in our history. And mm. we cannot, we cannot, we will never forget what has happened to Africans. And this intervention on our history, or our being, on our way of thinking, somehow is disrupted by colonialism. And later on, of course, they tried to bring in philosophical thought as to why we are subhumans, religious. And one of the interesting things is the religious, the religious uh, uh, way of looking at it. And they said, oh, let's look at the Northern Africa. Somehow they are civilized. But you know, Africans are in between. So they called the Northern Africans somehow, they are a hybrid population of the descendants of Noah and they have descended from Noah, so they are gifted in somehow crafting and technology. So let's call them hybrids. But the rest of the sub-Saharan Africa remain as Negroes, black, inferior, and if not devilish. So this, this, this was the thinking that they had. And we will not forget. We will not forget. That's why when our identity is reclaimed, I can mention, for example, Senor, Senghor in 1960s, late 1960s, 1969, 1968, he came up with this big word called negritude, that black is beautiful. Black is not actually devilish. Blacks are human mm. beings. Blacks are not backward. Blacks are not inhuman, but they are human. They are not primitive. They have their own history. They, they have their own way of thinking. They have their own pattern of thought. They have their own logic. And this last time I've, I've, I've talked about the contribution of Africans in, in the world of knowledge, so we can go back and refer to that. So the scramble for Africa in late 18s, 1880s had really so this big intervention on our image. And the way we've been introduced to the rest of the world was as slaves as subhumans. So this marks our identity. Whenever you see a black man in the Western world segregated, it is because the way black man is introduced to the rest of the world is wrong. 
They are the ones who defined us. They didn't give us the chance to define ourselves. And that's why revolution is important. So African history, uh, our own father Nkuruma said that uh, is confused. It is actually the teaching and orientation of the external influences, conflicting visions, prejudices that has marked the African identity in a way because colonialism has played a big part. And actually Africa was not defined by the Western as Africa, rather it was defined as the Western adventure. I don't know if it makes really a difference. I mean, I want you to pay attention. Africa hmm. was not defined as Africa, but as a Western adventure. When you go somewhere for an adventure, you write your history at that place. You don't write the place in and of itself. And this is something very serious. Then the letter on tribalism, border conflicts, whatnot, is part of the results of this big cake called Africa cut into pieces. So whether we like it or not, our history is marked. And don't underestimate post-colonial Africa lives on the threshold of this experience. If the ground is affected, whatever is planted after will be affected too. So somehow the farmland is affected and some of us who, who have come up, who have grown out of this land after colonialism in one way or another will live with the effect of colonialism. And one of the things they did was to bring prejudice against one another. By the way, there is no such a thing, tribe. I mean, how many of us chose the tribe we are born in? How many, who chose? Who chose his tribe? No one chose his tribe. No one chose his nationality. Hmm. But still, we somehow embrace this identity as given to us by the Western, reintroduced for us that this is who you are. That we hold on to it so much so that it compromised the whole bigger picture called Africa. That's why today we are fighting against one another. That's why today across the border in Kenya you have one tribe and the same tribe exists in the border of Uganda, the same tribe exists in the border of in, 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 in Tanzania. Now, are these people different? <coughs> no, it's the Western world who cut the cake and divided us in such a way that we rise against each other. So these are the things that has marked our identity, our border conflict. Today we go to the Hague to, to resolve African border conflicts. How in the world do we go to our neighbor's house for the problem that we have in our own house? Gentlemen, this is a very serious thing. So colonialism has marked our identity. And don't forget how we were viewed as backward subhumans, primitive, inhuman, emotional, illogical. Hmm. Now, on a second thought, when you look at globalization, now many people talk about neocolonialism, but by the way, I would, I would rather want to talk about globalization. And globalization in and of itself is a very good thing from the outside. 
you look at it and it brings the economy, the whatnots, and it creates what we call the world as a new global village. We are all connected and whatnot. But gentlemen, gentlemen, how do we become part of the global village if we have not rediscovered our roots? You know, in order to create one beautiful Africa, we need to be grounded in our own history as Ethiopians, Kenyans, Tanzanians, Nigerians, Ghanians, South Africans, Zimbabweans, Zambians, so that we bring all this natural beauty to the bigger picture. How do we become part of the global village without having our own self-image? Are we still part of the global village as subhumans, as inhumans, as primitives, as illogical and emotional beings? That's what it looks like, because if you find yourself as an African or African-American in the Western world, be it on the train, be it on the bus, be it on the streets, you are subjected for inhuman treatment. Another white person who is not even part of a law enforcement would ask you an ID and ask you to identify yourself. Are we equal? Because they feel they are not equal. They demand it. So our identity needs to be reclaimed in a form of globalization. They are redefining Africa in various ways that they are asking us to assimilate them instead of defining ourselves. We are still struggling with the self-image and our children abroad outside of Africa are still struggling with self-image that why am I bullied in the school? Is it because I am black? Is being black wrong? Am I a mistake? These are the questions that our children are facing today. So, when we go back to the roots, we need to redefine ourselves. We are black people and we are not apologetic to anyone. We are beautiful. We are human. We are logical. We can reason. We can unify ourselves, liberate ourselves, reform ourselves, and revolutionize the old thinking, tear it apart and put ourselves and write our own histories in the global village. So, it is time for Africans. And believe it or not, I have this hope that Africa is on the rise once again. The consciousness that is happening, that's taking place right now, gives me hope. When fellow Africans in 27 countries came out with their flags and said, we are black people, we are Ethiopian, and we don't apologize to anyone, and we are here to discuss terms, not to take whatever you dictate for us, now there is new history being written. If they have ever thought that Burkina Faso, Niger, the whole of West Africa once again throws a stone and says, French, go back home, it is about time we are about to start writing our own history again. Africans deserve all the equal rights with the rest of the world, with the rest of the human race, to express themselves as they are. And it is happening, and it will continue to happen. That's why we are here, 
just talking every now and again about decolonizing the mind, throwing away the old image, recreating African image, recreating how beautiful we are inside out is very important for the narrative. If we don't have our own narratives, we will still allow them to redefine and define us from the dictionary they have back in the 80s, 18th century. Now we have thinkers who are writing. Now we have philosophers who are resisting. So the battlefield is not only at gunpoint, but our pens, our books, our minds, our hearts is a battlefield. We need to redefine and change the narrative. That's when African identity is reclaimed. This one is known as famously by uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, Conscientism. Conscientism. We are conscious of who we are. So let's continue to create this awareness. Let's go back to the roots by defying what the wrong narratives and throwing it away and reclaiming our new identity that we to have history, we to have rights to write our own history instead of being a Western adventure. Thank you so much. And I will discuss many of the factors that will come in a form of question, because I know I have, I have not done justice to the topic, but I'm trying to give just an overview for people to really digest the whole idea. Otherwise, if we say it all, it won't be right. I just want to hear perspectives from our brothers and sisters out there. And we, 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 we chew and rechew what we've talked so far. Thank you very much, uh, uh, um, Minister of Education, uh, Nati. <laughs> Nati. <laughs> to others, your brother Nati, your <laughs> Dr. Nati. Your... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not. A... <laughs> you know, I'm just. You know, a... we, we, we are on, uh, there's honorary uh, 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 doctors and professors, and um, in this family, uh, 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 for any type of knowledge that one brings, uh, we accept it. Yes, there's a, even we know that there's academia, there's people that are in academia, the, there's doctors, there's professors and whatnot. Others don't want to come, and uh, but with time they will join us and we'll hear more yes. perspectives. But this is a platform yes. for all Africans and we don't yes. want any African to feel small with their ideas. So that yes. Africa can grow and Africa's minds can broaden up and, and be listened to instead of only the few minds uh, that are out there. So we need more African minds to build this continent because it needs all our minds if we, we are to uh, redefine, uh, as you said, our, our identity and our roots as Africans and how we fit in into this cold globalization and stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, now, there yeah. there is... There is a question on the chat by mm. Hello World. Hello World is asking, I don't get it. What do you mean by that we are conscious of who we are? Uh, it's, 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 uh, I, I probably may not have done justice to this. When I say we are conscient, I mean conscience, we are aware of what has been done to us. We are aware that we've been defined by the Western world before we define ourselves, we are aware and conscious that still we want to throw this narrative and define ourselves at our own right. This is what it means, conscious of who we are. You know, when you discover who you are, you have a family tree, and in your family tree, you may relate some of your characters to your great-grandfather, to your father, your brother, maybe the way he is acting, maybe is from his uncle. 
So when you define your family lineage, you might get some of the characters and where it might have come from. And collectively as Africans, we also look at the pre-colonial, the colonial and post-colonial and the present globalized universe as a whole to see and be aware of who we are once again. So this is a good question. Um, I am sure that many would 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 like to give uh, their own perspective. They are most welcome, and actually, some people are also demanding if they could come in. Probably it's about time if you see it fit, uh, Chairman, uh, to 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 share the streamyard link so that they can come in and we digest whatever we are discussing about. Yeah. And I just want to uh, uh, um, give our a, uh, a big shout out to Hello World. Uh, he just became our member as well. And Hallelujah. Welcome, question. brother. <laughs> Welcome, Hello World. And I think he had another question as well. Uh, he had two questions. The first one was this one. Uh, before I, I open the, the, the chat for the people to join, I think mm. he had another question. I think this was the first question before the other one that you just answered about the conscious. Mm. Okay. If you the question answer. here... What do you mean? Are you talking about the identity we view ourselves with or the way in which the colonizers view us? Now, there is a fine line between the two. They are one thing, they are one and same thing at the same time. Now, yes, we define ourselves by any right just like the rest of the world our identity, who we are, where we have come from, where we want to go with it. And on the second thought also, it really matters how others also view you. Uh, well, I mean, those who have done uh, psychology, uh, psychology, you can remember the Johari windows. There are four compartments in self-awareness. Uh, there is the facet, the blind side, the unconscious, whatever. So. The narrative is very important. If we are living only with the definition the colonizers give us, we cannot, we cannot be part of this globalized world because someone else is defining us. So it's very important that we identify ourselves as Africans, then the rest can say whatever they want as an addition to how we define ourselves. But what I'm trying to say is, while we are minding our own business as Africans, we are already defined by the Western world. We were not given even a chance to define ourselves in the global world, minding our own business, living peacefully, simply because of their thirst and hunger to, to expand their socioeconomic empire they came and defined us. And the way they defined us, I, I'm, I'm repeating it, subhumans, backward, emotional, inhuman, primitive, and illogical. How do we have a platform being defined like that and we don't agree with that? You know, one of the things that if you tell the Western world, you guys, you came and disturbed our, they will tell you, yeah, 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 but still, it was just one time ago because they know who they are. So they will consider it as part of the critic in defining themselves, but not the whole thing. But us, subhumans, really? <laughs> That's where the question is. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, um, our Minister Nati. Um, I just want to welcome uh, this Johannes and there's uh, Sam Belai. Uh, I think uh, I'll first go to um, Johannes. Um, if... Welcome, uh, Johannes. Okay, thank you. Uh... Welcome, brother. Thank you, thank you. How are you? We are blessed. We are happy to hear from you. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, we've got Minister Nati, if, if you've got any question or any contribution, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nati, for your uh, very nice brief. I appreciate that. Uh, you, my first question is that how can uh, how can we change this? Uh, 
the narratives uh, which is disseminated throughout the last uh, uh, couple of years. Uh, how will be the medium? How can we uh, change this one? And the other one is uh, you mentioned that these uh, fake borders uh, and the impact that. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. what will be the solution to have uh, a common understanding between neighboring countries and uh, to uh, give them the brief history of those uh, neighboring tribes and tri uh, nations? So, how can we uh, change these narratives, what we have right now? And what will be the uh, platform? Because now, most of uh, our users, they are using uh, social media. So, mm -hmm. that will be uh, the solution just to have a common understanding about our history, or mm -hmm. is that the uh, common academic ways? Mm -hmm. That's my question. Um, well, that's an excellent question, and I must say it's an excellent question. And I, 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 I need to acknowledge uh, before even I attempt the question that this question cannot be answered in one way. But... Mm -hmm. uh, when I was uh, going through this topic and trying to come up with a few points here and therefore brainstorming, uh, these points came up. Uh, the first one is revolution is obvious. Revolution. What we are going right now as a, as, as a, a continent and as a country for the Ethiopians uh, is one of the platform where change is about to come. We need to revolt against some mentalities. And Johannes, if you had followed in the previous sessions, I was talking about decolonizing, deconstructing, doing away, and it needs a certain revolution. And this revolution is obvious because now it is on a boiling point. Look at the situation in Ethiopia and look at how it is unifying and becoming a blessing in disguise to the rest of the continent. So these are the obvious uh, revolutions that I'm talking about. Look at the Congolese saying no more to the UN infiltration in their own country. Look at Niger, Burkina Faso saying to the French troops, go back home. So a revolution is very important. And this is how even the Western world was formed. If I may give the world wars, the first world war, especially the second world war, it reformed them a big way. Yes, they lost lives. They went through a very, very rough time, but they found themselves. So the first thing for us Africans to say no more, not only to the Ethiopian, the Congolese, the Niger, but also to African-Americans dying on the streets of America unjustly is very important because at the end of the day, as human race, we are black people. And I've talked about the ladder of race when I talked about race, racism in the past. So we are all black and we need to have a unifying factor. So unification, whether in the Caribbean, Bridge, I'm sure he's around, he'll talk about it. Or be it in the US, be it in, in the UK, the black cause must be given attention. It's not for some districts and few cities to come out and say no more. Everyone should be connected because it's a chain of mentality that is destroying us single-handedly everywhere. Liberation. In our history, we have fought for liberation from the colonial power, and we have somehow gotten the ceremonial uh, liberty from the colonial masters, and we, uh, we, we, we celebrate it. Uh, but liberation is not yet at hand. It is us to liberate it, be it in a form of education, be it in a form of speech, platform, platforms like you mentioned in the globalized world, the media, look at where we are now. We are talking from different parts of the world as Africans in this channel. So unification, liberation, reformation, when it comes to borders especially, that we need to accept the fact that one clan shouldn't be Ugandan and the other clan is in Kenya, the other one is in Tanzania. 
we have our own land settlement issues and we have our own tribal administrations where the government can take a big, a big advantage of dialogue. You know, one of the things that pains me the most is that our governments have luxurious offices, but they cannot attain what our forefathers attained under a tree. That should pain us. So we need to reclaim this wealth of ours that we are able to dialogue amongst one another. So it's, it's not a one-way thing, but still, yes, we can go back to our roots. And I have given the gachacha process in the Rwandan uh, genocide reconciliation process, for example. This gachacha uh, program is a reconciliation program where people bring their neighbors who have lost their loved ones and those who have killed and they sit and reconcile culturally, I repeat, culturally, without any Western world raising fund about it, bringing any narrative about it, people sitting and reconciling amongst one another. We have all the resources that it takes. It is just that we need to go back to our roots. Again, we need to suck the minerals that we have in our own cultures, the richness in our own cultures. Uh, I hope, I don't want to take much time. I want to give chances to the others also to, to, to talk about this. Johannes, I hope I've done a bit of justice. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, Johannes, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, Samir Belai, uh, you're next, brother. Samir, can you hear us? Uh, Samir, I think he's struggling with sound. Um, in the meantime, um, can we go to to uh, to Niger? Hi, how are you? All good, brother. How, how are you, Oga? Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so is this about uh, the African identity? Yes. Um, I guess when I was on the channel the last time, there was a Sudanese guy there, and he talked about how he barely even knew his own history, um, mm -hmm. you know, until he was a lot older. Sudan, with such a heat, rich history, almost as rich as that of Egypt, and he didn't know. Um, it tells you that there is a, there was a conscious effort somewhere put on the ground amongst our countries not to tell our people their true history. And um, I wanted to ask him whether they even had like museums like the way the Egyptians have, whether people come to our visit their pyramids and all that stuff. No, none of that is happening because they don't even know their own history. They don't even know what's happening in their country. Um, th this is something that our people need to start realizing. And they, they, we keep saying these things but to translate it to the streets is not the same because the people that are operating on the streets are the people that have power and able with the forces. It means the only way to change it is to change the minds on the streets to those people that don't normally care about these things needs to start understanding that it, our problem is not just coming from, you know, nature, that this is not how our forefathers used to live. Our forefathers used to have more than this. They were defeated and uh, we fell and that led to the situation we are living now a lot of people are used we our people are already used to being second class citizens we view, we have used to settling for scraps if you look at what is going on in ethiopia now we are fighting for what <laughs> it's to inherit what land that you don't even control tribe tribalism to fight what it's like you are in hell and you're trying to fight to rule hell where there's suffering you should be trying to free yourself so that you guys live better. You know, go to heaven or something. You know, so I just feel like our people, that identity thing is a serious one. They don't seem to know their history at all. And it needs to start changing. People need to start, We need, like this channel is there. And a lot of, um, I, I keep saying it, this media campaign, there has to be a media campaign to open the eyes of our people to their own history. Why Sudan doesn't have a big... Okay, ask yourself. Queen Amerinus of Sudan, of Kush, fought with 
um, Rome's Caesar and they signed a peace deal when Egypt fell like a crumbling this thing. When England today, Great Britain today, was being ruled by Rome, Kush was able to fight Rome to a standstill, took the head of the, the statue of the Roman uh, leader and put it under their stool. And still, Roman, the Rome, Romans gave them everything they asked for. And do you see any movies being made of that woman? Why are no, there are no movies of that, of that hero? None. Because somewhere along the line, our people have been censored. There is no way that would have been the case otherwise. Because they don't want us to remember whom we are, what our people have done before. Some of the things other leaders have done, if they can silence that one that is actually out in the open, why wouldn't they silence others? Look at the history of Haiti. Have you seen anybody, anybody make a movie about it? No, they won't make a movie about it because the moment you want to start making a movie about it, they will start threatening you. Don't let these people know their history. And this is at the heart of why Africans are the way they are today. I think so because it's, if you don't know who you are, how do you even start fighting? Your yeah. next door neighbor is going to be your enemy. Because you don't know whether there's a bigger enemy out there. This is the problem. And our people, we need to start using this media because I believe that these, uh, what they call them, um, Google AdWords, uh, advertisements and all that stuff, you can use that to reach people on the continent. And if we start campaigns, just like they campaign everything to us, we use that kind of campaign. People have devices on the continent now. We need to start changing minds and let them start knowing who they truly are. Because if they don't know that, they would not know how they came to be where they are. Our forefathers, oh my God, they'll be wondering what happened, how our, how our people completely forgotten whom they are. That they, they, they literally run to their, their, their forefathers enslavers. The people that enslaved them, their own forefathers, they will run to them for savior. They will run to them for weapons against their own brothers. The people that inflicted this situation on the continent, you run to them for help. Do you know what kind of mind, you know, what kind of voodoo that, that takes? Our people have completely forgotten whom they are, and we have to start doing a job of reminding them that, you know what? You know, it's all nice that, you know, it's good to love all humanity and all the rest of it. They are not loving you the same. You need to fix your own problem yourself. You can't keep running to the people that enslaved your forefathers calling on another woman's husband to come and save you. Getting AIDS, what is AIDS? Nobody needs, no self-respecting human being needs AIDS. We have been given a lot of gifts. Africans have had thousands of years of existing uh, generations to be robust themselves. They should be using it to better themselves. The reason why they are not doing it is because they don't know whom they are. And we have to start changing that. If I had the, uh, the money myself, I would be subscribing right now, making the videos and sending it out there so that anybody that wants to watch any Nigerian movie, any Kenyan movie, any stuff, they will see an advert. And that advert will be pointing out some of all these truths to them. Because the more you know the truth, the more you disentangle from the people that have put you in that position. Imagine, you know, living with somebody for years and finding out that they are the ones that massacred your family. Haven't we seen movies like that? They massacred their family and pretend as if they are caring for you. And they never, they never give you any position of trust. They never let you grow beyond what they, where they want you to grow. We have to start changing that ourselves. If we don't do it ourselves, we'll just end up doing the same cycle again, over and over again. I don't think we may survive it for too long. It's just that simple. If you don't fight for yourself, nobody will fight for you. And right now, Africans are not fighting for each other. Why is Kenya, Sudan, Rwanda, and all the rest not coming to the aid of uh, Ethiopia at this moment? What, what are they waiting for? I heard recently that the um, United Arab Emirates was had a, a, an air corridor where they are supplying stuff to. Why are they the ones supplying stuff to us? This is, why is United Arab Emirates, why have they got so many military bases on the continent? 
What is wrong with us? We've got a billion people. Hmm. We've got a billion people. What are our men doing? Our young men are without jobs. They don't want to give them the job to defend their countries. They don't want to give them a job to protect their people, to maintain the peace. They just leave them unemployed and leave them without information of, the, of their history. And the only thing they give to them is YouTube and Facebook and showing them how the, the rest of the world is doing very well. And they want to leave their home and cross the uh, Mediterranean Sea to go and raise their life. Some of them, they abandon their father's inheritance and travel overseas. To go. They say they are going to school, but they never return. The continent is full of castles, companies, empires that are lying fallow because the children that are supposed to inherit these things have gone overseas and never want to return again. And our infra institutions are crumbling. Even king the kingdoms. Some people go overseas and they adopt Western life and completely forgot the tradition of their forefathers. They never return. And this is where this is what is causing our problem. And this is why this topic is important identity we don't even know who we are uh, uh, uh niger if, if if i can just uh, uh pose this question here right i think it's almost uh similar to what you're saying about identity uh and to you nati as well uh the word black um as far as i know in, in, even in my in my culture there is no such thing as black the black the the word black when when it comes to people it came when the colonization was in Africa. Because in my culture, when I see somebody, oh. I say Umuntu. That's why the Bantu word, that's why when the people say, uh, there's uh, the, the, when the British or whoever wrote the history and said, there's the, the Bantu people, there's what, but it's for me, it's, it's wrong. It's a wrong history and narrated in a wrong way because the way we pronounce, when we talk about a person, we call it Muntu is, is singular. Bantu is is, is plural, it's many people. So we never said those black people, we never said those white people, we never said that. We always use Abantu, meaning people, when you're referencing to somebody who's a person, a human being. The, the, the color was never an issue. The color became when, when others came in our continent trying to define who we are or trying to be superior using a so-called color to, to, to make themselves higher than the, the others. But can you just maybe tackle this, this question as well? Okay, um, I hate the word black. Uh, we are African. Why do we keep buying into the race myth of the white man? Um, I think um, words have power only when they are given power. And um, a word is just a word. If that word becomes a word that represents excellence and greatness and all the rest of it, suddenly so everybody will cling to it. It's just a word in the end. And what is being, this term now has been made to seem like it's a bad term because of what it is represents the fall of Africa, isn't it? That's basically what it simply means, the fall of black people all over the world. And um, if that word rises again, if, if black people are strong, to, okay, let me give you an example. I was in Nigeria, you know, for all my life and I went to Ghana, you know, when I was a bit older. It turns out that Ghanaians were somewhat darker than us. And, you know, while I was in Nigeria, I never really thought, you know, Dhaka was anything or maybe, if anything, Nigeria probably wanted to be lighter. So when I was in Ghana, I saw a different side of the dark, distinct color. I actually felt, okay, maybe I'm a little bit too light. I need to go a, a few shades darker now. You <laughs> want to be darker. So what that tells you is that human beings are fickle and our minds can change based on what we consider excellence. Because what I saw in Ghana was black beauty there that um, in a way that i didn't see it in nigeria before the hand so that is what i mean sorry go ahead um thanks uh, to niger i just want to add up one thing uh, but before that i want to appreciate zinga sanda uh, she i suppose uh, she uh she, she's giving us good insights on the comment section and one of the comments she said it is education that is the way forward and i've always said education 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 till i bore people down but it is it is a very good point and i want to thank her for that now i want uh, i i i hope i will not come out to be very funny when i say this but you see even those who call us black, we call them white. 
But really, if you go to the beach and see them in their swimming costume, you will see four colors on their body. And uh, white itself is not really just to explain them. If we look at it, there is pink somewhere uh, on their buttock, probably where the sunshine is not getting is red somewhere at the back. So uh, even themselves, they have three, four colors when they are in their swimming costume. I don't know if I am wrong on that. But now black. You see, one of the things that even the way we understand black is being taught by them. So that's why we find it very negative. In and of itself, black is beautiful. Look at it from the philosophy of color. Without black, you cannot mix any kind of other colors. Remove black and I will give you other colors. You cannot get other colors by mixing other. Amongst the basic colors, black is the backbone of all colors. So, gentlemen, let's not be cheated. Black is beautiful. But you know what? The dictionary, black is something negative. Uh, they express uh, spiritual things, black. They put everything that had negative connotation to black. But really, really, what is black? What is white? What is really red? It is us who named it, right? If, we, if the universe uh, agrees that from tomorrow yellow is going to be red and red is going to be called yellow we can continue with this concept so it's a concept so sometimes when we feel negative it's because what comes with it the narrative that comes with it is what is destroying us that's why for example a child when he gets injection all they know is the pain is but they are they have been vaccinated against polio their life has been saved so because they were vaccinated when they were children and it was painful, all the time when we think of needles, we have a very ne negative connotation. It's about pain. We, don't, we have destroyed all that life-giving aspect of a needle to a medical uh, treatment uh, field. So please, let's not hate because we are, told, we are taught to hate black. Let's love it. And without black, there is no other color. And as the second is the philosophy of uh, Umuntu, uh, Abantu, in the plural and the singular. A human person is a human person. But when there is an adjective added to that, sometimes it becomes very divisive. So we are taught to feel this way. And one of the things that we can, in as much as education and learning helps us, there are some things we need to unlearn, unlearn. And these are some of the narratives that they gave us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nati. I think this is also another topic, uh, Niger and Nati, and even you, Rich, that we also need to uh, tackle. I think what you said, uh, uh, Niger, about um, the, the the shades, I mean, the shades of, of, of Black people, the, the, ski, the different... Um, uh, tones and skin types and all those things in, in, in the black race or in the African race, if I may use that word. Uh, it, it has also, um, there was at some point a debate about the lighter skin people getting even sometimes better treatment than a, a darker, a darker skinned uh, person of the same race. Even if, let's say, somebody who's, who might be a mixed race or who might be a light skin uh, African, and uh, somebody who's a bit darker, sometimes the way the treatment, the way they treat us, sometimes it may differ according to different places, different uh, 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 scenarios. You might find there was a debate about some light-skinned black people uh, getting way, way better in uh, um, what is better service than if you're dark-skinned. Sometimes they might not even pay attention to you until they know that oh, this is so and so, then they wanna help you and stuff. But anyway, this is another to be for another day. Uh, can I just yeah. give uh, my brother Rich uh, 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 um, the floor, and then I'll come back to you, Nati and Niger. Oh, Rich is gone again. Oh, I'm here. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Grand Rising Virgin. Let me say, Grand Rising, a nice late by you guys. But every day, the Grand Rising. Uh, every time I try to put the camera on, it's... Uh, it shuts me out of the chat, but that's fine. Uh, it won't stop anything. Um, I think that uh, the question was what? What was the question, Nati? 
how how uh what's the question of this chat again? I forgot what I was gonna say. African identity and Pan Africanism, right? Yeah. So I I always believe that as I tell you guys before, when we when we try to solve a problem, we must find we must try to find the lowest common denominator in every problem. That's how we solve problems. Because sometimes we want to put a plaster and a deep cut, and this is a deep cut. This is not a simple cut that we have here. Um, I mean, the incursion on Africa hasn't stopped since it started a thousand years ago. There's still an incursion going on in Africa. And uh, I think that what we have to do first is we have to fix our economics. Because even if we have teachers that want to teach what we want to teach, what we want them to teach our children, those teachers must be supported. Um, and they must be encouraged. They must be able to move around how they how they um, are supposed to in order for them to be the teachers that they should be. But we can't do anything of anything without our economics sorted out. And uh, the economics is what's going to build this house that we are trying to build here on a strong foundation. Our house called Africa. The economics have to be set first. But even before the economics there must be a certain type of revolution happening. One in our minds and one outside. We have to change the unit of measurement. We, we only want to value things when other people give it value. We only want to give it as much value as other people give it also. That's because we have, we have, we have got our unit of measurement taken away from us. And they see, we see us how they see us, not how we are. Because we had our, our history taken away from us as well. So we need to organize intelligently first. First, we need to organize intelligently. We need to have a space uh, where we can collect, store, and strategically redistribute our energies, all our energies. This will be the, this will be the beginning of everything. When we have that space where we can do that. So then we can support our own teachers. Then we can support our own soldiers. Then we can support our own doctors and our own engineers. And, that's, and, and uh, this is a uh, this is a big. This will be the beginning of it, of of everything. So when we build that platform, when we build those things, um, those systems, because as I was telling you guys before, this is not just an individual and individual basis. This is. A, these are systems that are against us, not just people. These people are following the systems that they're supporting when they judge us. They're not just judging us as individuals. This is one of the reasons why we can't fight back, um, fight them back, because every time we try to fight them back, they feel like they have a right to oppress us from there because it's a system. So now we have to build systems to combat them. And also what we can do right now, partially at least, we can begin a real soft war. See, the Iranians, they understand the power of having a soft war. Eh? A soft war is a real powerful war. If you could have a good soft war, you already won three quarters of the war already, if you have a good soft war. This is why Abi is so um, happy being out in the field with his soldiers, because the Ethiopians are winning the soft war. They're winning all over the world. They're, they're marching all over on social media. They're, they're, put, they're putting their image out there about who they are and not who people telling them are uh, not who people telling others that they are. So we have to start a soft war now. Like the, the soft war have to start now. And next thing is that we must start reading our history like it's history. I start reading the Bible like it's history. I start reading the Quran like it's history. This is real life we live in here. We are the pals of today. We have dreams and, and visions that we are getting. I myself are getting them, but we have to act upon them. We have to engage with the world. That's how you engage with the world. When you're actually having dreams, and little visions, and you can act upon them. When you can look around you and find solutions to the problems that you're having in your life from looking at things around you. We have to get back to that stage where we are actually using the things that we are, we are actually using our own tools that we have at our disposal in order to solve the problems that are around us because they're preventing us from solving our own problems and then they're bringing the solution. So they're, calling, they're causing problems in, in, uh, in our life, but, and, and then they're coming and telling us that change is slow. Do you know what I mean? Like these problems happen real fast, but they come and tell us that the change is slow. 
Like, look at how long it took them to, to sodomize and kill Gaddafi. It took them two months to do that. But then look at after 10 years, 10 years, 11 years after now, we still have slaves in Libya and we still have people dying in the ocean trying to get over to Europe, to the Mediterranean. These, these, these things are because they're preventing us from solving our own problems. So we have to solve the problems that we have in our house first. And I also think that the Africans on the continent, we're going to have to get serious and organized effectively so that we can protect our resources and then we can value our own resources when we do protect them. That's what I think. Mm. Yeah, I, uh, let me just second some of the things he said. I think he said, I think he spoke quite well. And one of the things you tend to find with most of the discussions is that everybody seems to come up with the right solutions. I guess one, one of the problems we are having so far is sequencing. Um, some have to come after the other or before the other. There is this, um, you know, somebody suggested something about education, educating our people. Whenever I hear that, I always get a little bit cringy, almost. I don't know why I feel that way, but that's how it comes across. Because when you say education, you are saying, you, are, you have to convince African leaders to tell them, not convince them, even tell them to start teaching in African schools, Africans through history. If they do that, the moment they start moving in that direction, the other parts of the world consider it, consider it a hostile act, and this is what they do. They consider, they literally consider it a hostile, a hostile act. And when they do that, it tells you what the, what the truth. You are not free because they know that when you educate your people, they will say you are brainwashing your people against them. When you are just basically telling your people the truth, they would rather you tell them that Mongo Park is the one that first discovered Nigeria and all the rest of it, Columbus and all those. They don't want you to go that further back to start telling them about the Kush and all the rest of it. No, they don't want that. Don't start doing that. They're not going to find that funny. They will consider it a hostile life. I remember they are present in Africa. I think somebody highlighted on this chat saying that they are present in Djibouti. They are right next door to Ethiopia. So many military bases right next door to Ethiopia. I wonder why the Horn of Africa is the way it is. They are right there. And that place is on fire all the time. It's unstable all the time because they don't want it to be stable. And how are we going to rule all these things out? I believe that one of the ways to go about some of all these things uh, is, is, is the reason why I always I mean, get, get a bit skeptical about that education thing because you have to go to the schools. Look at what happened to Ethiopia now. Ethiopia tried to do something and boom, they just started a civil war there because they, they are the ones on the ground. They have physical presence on the ground. We, so this guy mentioned, uh, the previous speaker mentioned the soft, uh, this thing, the uh, war. I think that is important. And I touched on that with the idea to start a campaign over the heads of the leaders. Because some of these leaders, maybe they want to do the right thing, but they don't want to be the one facing the sanctions. Mm. They, they want to do the right things, but if they move in that direction, suddenly, boom, sanctions. America actually devised a policy last year to start sanctioning people. That's they call it a kind of uh, a kind of weapon that they're going to be using now as a sanction. The sanction is as a weapon. If you do what they don't like, boom, they sanction you, and mm -hmm. they don't waste time to use it because they are using it to because they fear that China is rising, so they are using it to deter people that go on the side of China or try to be too independent of them. So you have to go over the leaders' heads. This is why I'm thinking that soft war, online war, you know, educating the people is one of the fastest way to get to the people. If you try to change the education system, the government will be removed. Hmm. That's the problem. Hmm. So, Niger, I think I think you somehow answering to this uh, 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 post here from this person watching the Hawks uh, about yeah, yeah. Uh, the African uh, roots. Uh, uh, has been lost by the present leaders. AU has failed to live to its expectations. I think, as you say, that uh, some of the leader, leaders are afraid of regime change if they speak out or they take a stand uh, 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 decision to 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 be to to uh, empower uh, Africans. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Kagame said it himself. He said it that just because we told them we didn't want fairly used clothes anymore, they put sanction on us. <laughs> you don't want you don't want clothes some other person has worn in your country, they put sanction on you. Mm. Kagame said yeah, it, that tells you what, how petty they can be. Actually, uh, you know what happened that 
when when Anthony Blinken came uh, to Nairobi after he went to see uh, Obasan John uh, and he flew to Nigeria. And one of the journalists uh, who asked him a serious question, uh, he somehow brushed it away. And this is the question. She asked him, you have removed Ethiopia from the AGOA beneficiaries. That is the thread uh, which supports uh, more than 10,000 women producing for the market. And she asked him, is it really objective to deny 10,000 women their job? Because if this sanction is obvious, it will, they will not be paid to bring about change in Ethiopia. And this is where we need to be very cautious that the so-called sanctions and aids and uh, uh, loans have some strings attached to them. And you need to accept that. And uh, one of the things that uh, uh, that was talked about in, in the previous comment that the AU and other African leaders are letting us down because their hands are twisted by all means to be puppets of the Western world. And it is us to say no more to this, no more, because we want Africans to discuss terms with the Western world. By the way, we have all the raw materials that is produced within Africa. If the United States of Africa is really a dream, can't we trade amongst ourselves? Mm. Can't we exchange exactly. amongst ourselves? Don't we have all everything that we need? Why do we independently export all our goods and buy it double the price from the same same people who buy our raw materials? So we need to say no more to our leaders, no matter how peaceful our country seems. But if we don't have voice as African Union, we, they, we don't need them. We need to remove them. Because by the way, guys, African Union and whatnot, every year the EU and the AU, they come together to meet. But mind you, they are just there after the meeting, drinking the whole night and womanizing. And the following day, they are there in their heavy ha with their heavy heads mm. sleeping during the meeting. And I'm saying this because I know the nightlife of Addis and what they are doing when the sun goes down. And actually, let me tell you, the, the business, the nightlife booms when there is AU and EU meetings in Addis. Basically, well, w the reason why they are going in big delegation is to just enjoy life, womanize, drink in the name of deliberating for Africa. We need to say no more to this. And this, this is the thing. They need to produce really a document for each and every meeting that they have. Not something to be posted online, but some action plans. But the problem is because we don't have civil wars like Ethiopia now, we are at peace. We are not at peace in as long as they are doing this kind of mockery on us. So our, our, our leaders have a hand in this kind of uh, indirect colonialism. They are just the puppets of the Western world. So I think we are, I'm, I'm, I'm still considering myself lucky to come to this level of consciousness where whatever is happening now is going to give birth to something big here in Africa. Because people are becoming very, very aware of how fraud their leaders are, how they are twisting their hands just to feed their own personal interest and stay in power. Yeah, mm. the, the African Union, they have a peace and security council that is supposed to be preventing these type of things that are going on in Ethiopia and others. They are not doing anything. And this is the kind of stuff that you see, we have instruments that were created to do the right thing, but we're not, they are not using it. And this is where people should be demanding action. They should be the ones declaring a moratorium on conflicts. Anybody that really takes arm on the continent against fellow Africans should be the one that is considered the bad guy. Simple. No reason, no, from, we, we start from there. Because what that does is create a peaceful environment that would mean a lot of it will give Africa time to build. Because every time we build, we start conflict. Every time we build, we destroy it. 
and this tool is right there and our the african union is not using it they are, it's clear their job is to anticipate conflict and prevent it negotiate and all the rest of it why are they not the one declaring that okay if this is if this continent we have had a lot of conflicts we are behind in technological development we have a lot of poverty going on let's declare a moratorium on conflict man and this armed conflict if you start conflict you face the whole africa simple i don't see any reason why that kind of uh, this thing, uh, uh, bill should be opposed by anybody they are saying don't kill each other who will want to fight that kind of uh, this thing? that will be showing your hand and these are simple things we can ask for because if you ask them say okay why are you not declaring a moratorium on any physical uh, this armed conflict on the continent why are you not doing that then they will, they will have to answer you why, why they are not doing that because uh, we like these people to be fighting these people. We like these people to be fighting these people. Because if you did that, this is all stuff that is happening in Ethiopia now because Ethiopia is a democratic, a democratic system right now. The guy has been elected. It wouldn't be possible to happen. Others that are going on on the, on the continent like this time that was happening in Mozambique wouldn't be possible because anybody that goes there and does that nonsense will face the consequences from the whole African continent. This is what I mean. And those little, it sounds small, but if you can influence the African Union to make such a this pronouncement, you'll be surprised the environment it will create. A lot of Africans will start returning back to the continent. There are many of them that are running away, not only because of poverty, also because of simple security. They don't feel safe. If they, How many Ethiopians want to travel from the um, US to Ethiopia right now? You don't want, especially if you're from Tigray, you don't want to come back. If you're a, if you're a physicist, it's not going to matter. You're going to be there serving the people that enslaved your forefathers till that kingdom come. Yeah, by the way, to Niger, uh, one of the things, again, as I said, I keep on saying that we are on the right track and we are going to change the narrative is, uh, I don't know how aware you are about the Ethiopian situation that this coming Ethiopian Christmas, we are expecting... Uh, one million uh, Ethiopian to come back home. And this thing, we, we, we don't need to take it for granted. It's, it's a powerful uh, tool. And I think this Pan-African uh, Forum will take advantage of this to spread it to the rest of Africa. You know what this means? This means that we are going to recount all our resources and with all our brothers, African-Americans all over the universe, if we put our heads together, we are going to change the trend. We are going to change the narrative. So this is a blessing in disguise. And I'm really watching out for the coming Ethiopian Christmas uh, closely because I want to see how Ethiopians react. And imagine if Nigerians all over the world come back to Nigeria just to show their fraternity and each and every country comes back home you know what it means? If these people simply spend one dollar, one million dollar, we are talking about one million dollar. So the resources that we have, if they decide to spend twenty dollar throughout one week or two weeks or one month, it means twenty million dollar. So if we put our resources, we have all that it takes. And this is what the Western world doesn't want. Look at the Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. It's going to be one of the biggest in Africa. But if the problem of power is resolved, how many people will see the light? Not exactly. as in the power bulb. Not as in the power bulb. How many people will be able to read at night, open their minds, and awaken? The whole system is to keep Africa in dark. And this is one of the projects that is creating awareness to fellow Ethiopians. And the agreement, as I, uh, uh, is the latest that I have, is that even the power was supposed to be sold all the way to Tanzania. So this, one of the biggest dam in Africa, would do favor to the Horn of Africa. If we get light, you know what it means. So this, this, these are the systematic operations we need to go against. So... Uh, believe you in me, in one month's time, this trend of uh, the, the diaspora, the African diaspora, the African elites everywhere, the Caribbean, 
and the ones African Americans in the West will join this movement and it is going to be the downfall of the West soon and sooner that we may ever think. But what we need to do is create awareness. Let's wake each other up. Let's not just dwell in this minimum uh, ideal, I mean, a, a narrative which is, which is not realistic called tribalism and differences. We put our heads together and you will see things happening. But we need to create the awareness in as much as uh, we want this thing to happen sooner. Um, we, we, we also need, um, sorry, let me just add one last point. We also need pressure points to press. You know, it's like when you have a wall and you have a door next to the wall and uh, you can decide to bang your head through the wall and, you know, bust the wall through or you use the key to open the door. I think there is some logic in using pressure points and the gestures and, you know, solidarity, everything is good. But if we have instruments like what I am talking about, this uh, African Peacekeeping and Security uh, this in the Organization uh, Council in the AU, if you put pressure on them, is you you demand like we have a mass movement, you know, just like we are saying, leave Ethiopia alone, no interference and all the rest. You have a mass movement that says, declare a moratorium on armed conflicts against fellow Africans on the continent. It's a noble cause. It's a very powerful thing to be able to do for business, for peace of mind of the people on the continent. They should declare it. If you, if you put pressure on them, you will find that they will be forced to move. The negotiation will be how long should they declare it for? Should they declare it for 10 years? Should they declare it for 30 years? You want to be having the argument instead. Because you can, we all know now, any conflict can break out anywhere in Africa again. That needs to stop. How are we supposed to think past that? It's too much. That if we put pressure on them, they will know we are seeing them. They have the power to do it. Why are they not acting? Let them bring the governments that are opposing that uh, opinion. The governments that like us to be fighting each other on the continent. Let them see them. And I believe you, you will not see anybody come out. Because no, who, we, who is going to be against um, banning armed conflict on the continent? Because they know once you ban it, it gives Africa time to grow. Damn or no damn, Africans, once you have peace, Believe you me, people will spend money. People will come and spend money and trade will improve and people will be moving from one place to the other and Africa will grow. 30 years, no major armed conflict, you will not mm. recognize the continent anymore. Mm. Very true. And okay, that is there is within another our brother. power to do. That is within our power to do, not foreign power. Uh, if I uh, can just welcome our doctor, this is now a real doctor, by the way, <laughs> Dr. Beneza. Uh, welcome, uh, Doc. Uh, thank you, guys. I've been listening to all your conversations, and it's really fascinating. Um, you can hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you. Sure, sure. All right. So, Nati, uh, it's good to have you back. It's thank you so much. You. To Nigel, uh, good to hear from you, too. Ezra. Then also, I think uh, from Canada, I think there's uh, another person, uh, Caribbean, from the Caribbean guy. I don't know his name. That's Ridge. Um, yes, my name. Ridge. My name is Ridge. Ridge, Francis Ridge. Yeah, remember. All right. Okay. So, uh, nice topics. Actually, I was up, I was planning to talk to you about the African Union reform today. Um, I was talking to Mika also. And also facilitating Mika's visit to Ethiopia in the same at the same time. Um, so yeah, uh, I think there's a lot a lot needs to be done in African Union. Like yeah, you said to Nigel, I understand your perspective about the African uh, Union uh, Security Council, like the United Nations uh, Security Council. Uh, so. My my perspective on that is uh, I've been actually uh, conversing this weekend with a member of uh, the African Union who is an employee there working there, and it's almost a corrupt organization so far. So, uh, like, people steal money, people use it for drinking, 
uh, that doesn't mean that there are not people that are working their butts off, but most of the time, you know, the money goes to drinking, uh, parties every time, catering services get paid when the African Union people are here and the EU are here. And, you know, it's so interesting to always see the African Union depending on the EU or the United Nations to uh, fund it. Um, maybe I'll, I'll, uh, I'll finish up the proposal and present it to you. However, like I was working on some of the things that like uh, last time I gave you an assignment to work on to, to Nigel, I gave you the, you know, if you, the African defense uh, area and to Nati, the education area. I, I divided the, uh, the, you know, the topics where we can uh, develop a document that we can actually say no more to even African Union and uh, no more to our leaders when they are wronging us. Uh, we can actually practice the, the best ideological democracy or whatever system that we can call it uh, we can practice that one. That, that's what I believe in. And um, I would like to um, point out also on education systems and media, uh, media outlets like this uh, platform. I believe that we can do lots of things on these platforms like this. And the movement should continue in the entire uh, Africa, I think. Uh, Niger, Chad, uh, Senegal, Mali, uh, wherever there is, an, you know, a system failure that that we see every time, I think we need to push harder and uh, join hands. It's not only about Ethiopia. This is about the interstates, um, uh, interstate relationships that within the African continent and in the near future, the African country that we can call. Some of the things that we, we've been, you know, like one thing I learned uh, so far is we need to take responsibility. Like Nati said last time um, earlier, he said we called in, I mean, the prime minister made a call for the one million uh, diaspora to come into the country. And uh, that's not just one million. I've been communicating with, with a member of uh, also Swahili Nation, you know, WhatsApp group. He was telling me that he's gonna even uh, give up his green card and come back and live in Ethiopia and work. These are the things that are encouraging people uh, to come into their country and invest actually their knowledge. You know, most of the time when you go to the United States of America, whether you're a doctor, engineer, or your, your knowledge in Africa that you acquired doesn't actually matter. Not only that, I can give an example of. Um, that your knowledge in Africa even doesn't matter when you're working in a foreign investment company. For example, uh, my experience, I, I'm a veterinary doctor. Um, I have an experience of seven years and uh, I graduated, uh, that means I graduated seven years ago. So I work in a Dutch company. So whenever I prescribe a medicine for a really known disease, um, my general manager has to call to Holland to confirm that I'm doing the right thing. And most of the time I get confused, like, where do I live? I, where am I living? Is it, is it Africa? Is it, am I living in Holland? Am I treating uh, a Dutch cow or a Dutch bull or something like that? This is the feeling that I have all, always. So it's not only, you know, it's not the white people that are doing this to us. Most of the time we're doing this to ourselves. You know, we don't show respect to our own people, our own Africans. We, we should respect one another. You know, when you go, when you come to Ethiopian Airlines before, um, I had a testimony once from a lady who came from the United States of America. And she is actually, uh, you know, a U.S. citizen. So they just let her pass. And everyone from Africa was being searched. Everyone from Ethiopia was being searched at the airport. I'm not saying this is happening right now, but that, that was the, the, the trend. So they, they have the luxury to just walk into our country, but we don't even have the luxury to walk into their country, even due to the Omicron uh, um, virus in South Africa. Now, you know, they're banning 
uh, any kind of travel from Africa to the Western country. I mean, this should be done within the African continent too. We should be limiting our, you know, communication contact with within within the states. Okay, but without the states. Most of the time, we've been talking about aid. We've been talking about lots of things. I know I'm jumping from one point to another point, but I'll I'll, I'll try to uh, wrap it up together so that you can have an overview of the points that I'm trying to uh, point out. So, like most of the things that the things we need to take responsibility for, we have we're responsible too. Uh, we are responsible for our continent. We're responsible for our growth and development. We're responsible for the actions that we commit. Our leaders are responsible for us. We gave them the power. So they have to know that we can take the power away from them with this kind of movement that we are currently running, uh, with this kind of forum that we're currently uh, pushing forward into a One Africa concept. That One Africa concept is a concept where you guide your leaders instead of the leaders abusing their power and abusing uh, their status quo, then, you know, like uh, ignoring the community and uh, dancing with the enemy. Now, that, that shouldn't be allowed in Africa anymore. Uh, we have lost enough and we're not here to pick up arms and fight with uh, our uh, robbers we're going to forgive them and move on. But when we move on, there are going to be ground rules that we'll be working on uh, for the future. So I've been actually dividing uh, tasks for all of uh, Swahili Nation members and Swahili Nation um, or One Africa Forum members who are participating here. I'm developing a document where you can work and I can work and all of us can share a responsibility and bring that into uh, as a kind of proposal where we can go into the African Union and say, like, this is how it should be done. And this is how, because this platform, I believe, is going to grow. And when it grows, it's going to motivate people and encourage people. One of the things when, you know, when you go to United States or Europe, the things that Africans are leaving Africa for is not actually money like you said it earlier, it's not money or it's not uh, the food or it's not, it's nothing uh, except the system. So if we have a functional system in Africa, if we can establish a system, if we can bring minds that can uh, work on a system, on a technology, on a tech-based system, where, you know, when, when you go to office in Ethiopia, uh, there's someone sitting in that chair and he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, you go to city municipality or city administration, you ask him, I want to start this kind of business. Who do, who do I talk to? And he says, I don't know, maybe talk to that guy. Or when you go to telecommunication centers in Ethiopia, when you ask them, uh, I live in this village, I want to have a Wi-Fi router uh, installed in my house. And you ask, you tell him, this is my location. And he says, ah, I, that's not, I don't know that village actually, so there's somebody else. Like, and when you ask the other guy, he asks you to explain again and again. Like you have to explain for four people, and they don't know it. So this is this is what the African Union looks like. You know, they don't know what they're doing here. They don't know why they're here. They're they're they have lost track of uh, their representation. And I think we need to remind uh, people that it's really important that we know and we take responsibility for our actions and we'll be punished for it if need be and awarded for it if need be. So in this case, is, I think we need to work on taking responsibility as Africans and as Pan-African movement leaders. We need to work on uh, taking responsibility at the same time, making people responsible for their actions, for whatever they're doing. Like we said, they're drinking in bars at this time of the night, maybe. but are, are we making them take responsibility for this? Do we have a system that, you know, that's going to punish them? Or is everyone corrupt? Are they in a chain reaction like uh, in the African Union? So how can we break that, that bondage between them so that we can, you know, reestablish, reform the African Union? This is, I think, what we need really to work on. The Security Council in the African Union needs to work on. The Human Rights Commission in the African Union needs to work, be functional. So when people come from the diaspora community, 
In Europe, there is a system. In Africa, when you come, there is no system because they left it. They were gone. So they need to come back and re restart that system and establish the system that they have experienced in the United States, they have experienced in the in the Canada, and they have experienced in uh, Europe. They can establish it because they have the mind. We, we, we are amazing people. And I, I was actually working on different documents. And I was also talking to different media outlets for um, uh, Mika Chavales' uh, visit in Ethiopia. I was, I was talking to different medias in Ethiopia and I was telling them, it, we're not into like, you know, uh, welcoming just Mika. We're, we're, we're planning to welcome the vision of Mika, the vision and dream of Mika and the vision of the, the vision and dream of w One Africa Forum. Uh, so this is, I think, what we need to work on. Our medias are more focused on the business and entertainment, and we need to, you know, redirect their attention into mobilizing the people into becoming a potential uh, energy and changing it into kind of, I'm not good at physics, but potential energy is just a potential energy. And I, uh, but when you change it, that, when you change that, into kinetic energy, there is work being done. And I want to add one thing. Um, you know, people used to say, like, knowledge is power. But, like, there is this saying also that says, knowledge is potential, wisdom is power. You have to know how to use that knowledge instead of like, in, to turn it into power. So wisdom, how to use that knowledge is also power. Not just knowledge. Knowledge can be accumulated by reading and reading and reading. Then you're full of knowledge, but you haven't practiced it. And then it's just nothing. So it becomes a potential instead of power. So when we use the knowledge that we have acquired in anywhere in the continent, bring it back to our motherland and then practice that knowledge into redirecting Africa into another direction, then that's wisdom. And that's power. And when we do that, we'll change different systems. We'll have an up and running city municipality. We'll have an up and running regions, an up and running states that are communicated. They know which page they're in. You know, like uh, if Kenya, if I, have, if I have papers from Kenya and come to Ethiopia, if there is interstate relationship, a perfect uh, management system, then they would know how I came when I came, even in Ethiopia, that I'm coming because it, it will be communicated interstate. So I think we need to work on uh, bringing people into uh, changing the system and redirecting African minds into the concept that it's only lack of system that we have and lack of responsibility that we have. And we need to take responsibility of whatever we're doing. And we need to stand up and be aware. Like, like Nati said, awareness is very crucial. And we need to work in every media outlet possible, WhatsApp, Telegram, or Bible, whatever it is, we need to work on awareness about Africa. We are the next generation uh, uh, hope. And this is what we're fighting for. The, the only thing that we have is hope. And we plan to change it. So... I think we need to really work on redirecting the, the African potential, African minds into changing the African systems that have failed us and making Africa great again. Now, that's all I have to say today. Trump, I think. Eh? you ended with Trump. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a very good, uh, that's a very good uh, input, uh, Dr. Vanessa. Um, uh, action action plans are on the way. I suppose uh, Mike has, uh, my, Mika is uh, working on it together with Ezra, whereby the the One Africa Forum guys will have a, a small meeting via Zoom uh, on uh, practicalities of uh, what you've talked about. Am I right, uh, Ezra? Yes, yes. Um, uh, we so, already had one meeting already. Uh, okay. Just a small briefing, uh, nothing hectic, uh, but we we're going to be having another meeting this week uh, just to start the structures and whatnot. And okay. uh, yeah, but uh, this week we'll be starting the structure 
and we'll see how far we get and then obviously we'll still uh, proceed in, in building the system uh, that's going to work for us and something yeah. really sort of we, we believe in working with systems we're not just we are not those africans who are just doing everything uh, with chaos we need to have a structure and things to work in, in an orderly way and uh, with so much uh, minds like everyone who's here i know there's lots of knowledge just amongst the nine of you who are inside this platform there's so much and so many people out there so we need structures that are going to cater for the people that can really work smoothly and we can implement things uh, uh in a practical way as well uh Nancy, just uh, on the point raised uh you can you can answer them uh, or contribute there uh i'll i'll get back to the point since we have some uh, participants i can see on the platform uh, probably mm -hmm. instead of me trying to respond, uh, they might even have a response to it. So I would, I would, uh, let's give them a chance, then we'll wrap it up uh, as a whole. What do you think? Okay, yeah. Um, I just want to welcome uh, Biggie, uh, Senuti, Dr. R, and uh, Mr. John. And um, I'll start with uh, Biggie, then I'll go to Senuti, and then we'll go to uh, Dr. R, then uh, Brother John. Biggie, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Pastor Israel. Uh, it's good to be back on the uh, stage. I was a little bit busy, but I was still listening on the back background, but some of it uh, I probably missed. But um, I want to say good evening, Africa. Uh, good morning to the rest of the world, or good afternoon in some part of the world. Um, it's a blessing to... Uh, Sorry, Biggie, be, before you, you, you continue, I know I'm interrupting. Uh, really thank you very much for, for the live broadcast. Uh, it, it really means a lot to us and to the whole family that we're watching. Uh, um, it really means a, a lot to us. Um, taking the initiative, taking your resources to be live, your data, everything. We really thank you for, for being the, uh, the field reporter there in D.C., <laughs> I don't want to take the uh, Anderson Cooper part. <laughs> Let's start with that today. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Uh, it's an honor, and um, anything that I can do uh, for Africa. I'm open. This is the least I can do uh, what is in my territory, in my area. And all of us, uh, as uh, it's been mentioned earlier, that we are accountable for everything. You want to change. You want your voice heard. Uh, you want to do something about it. Yes, this is the, the platform. And um, there'll be another uh, rally uh, in uh, D.C., uh, it's going to be December 10th at uh, 9, 9 a.m. in front of the State Department again, just uh, as a reminder. So we want as many people. There are a lot of people that are coming out of the uh, out of states and uh, trying to make this thing happen. And another uh, 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 notice that I want to say is, uh, I don't know if any of you know Johannes Kefle. Uh He did uh, quite a few interviews all over, and he was one of the... Uh, speaker on stage yesterday and we had the chance to talk to him on the side before he went on stage uh and um he uh he accepted my invitation uh, uh to come on uh, one africa we're going to learn a lot more about the uh Eritrea movement the ethiopian movement and how we collaborating right now hand to hand and to make sure that that part of uh, horn africa is uh, is at peace so that'll be a great uh, person that's going to be uh, coming to our uh, show. Uh, I'm very grateful. You know, uh, you're on this. Thank you so much if you hear me. If you're on uh, on this broadcast, uh, again, uh, I want to thank you for taking your time. Uh, yesterday, I had a couple people that were really uh, 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 helpful. Uh, that's uh, my wife. I really appreciate her. I got that. That's fine. And as well, Rosie. Um, a good friend of ours uh, that took the uh, baton uh, and start doing the covering while I'm talking on the other phone uh, with uh, Mika. So it was a great experience yesterday. Uh, first first time going on the field. 
Uh, it's very easy to uh, take a camcorder or whatever recorded, but coordinating uh, would be so much interference uh, on the field because everybody's using Bluetooth, uh, including the speakers using the uh, Bluetooth. I mean, there, there was some some kind of harsh moment where you cannot cover it all sound uh, sound bite wise, but um, uh, the message is out there and everybody should uh, understand. One of the uh, highlights yesterday was uh, uh, when uh, the sp one of the speaker asked, you know, to hold hand and um, uh, we didn't know where it was going, but, um, <laughs> and uh, everybody hold hand, you know, this is COVID-19 time, you know, you know, people don't want to touch each other, you know, uh, with all the differences. But yesterday, the solidarity, whether it's uh, uh, COVID or not, holding hand showed um, that there's no uh, ethnic uh, discrimination. And he asked, you know, the person you're holding, is he Oromo, is he uh, Amara, or is he Tigray? You don't know. We just hold hand. So that showed us an instant unity uh, on the field. That's what I uh, took back yesterday. It was very powerful. And, I, and Mika talked about it also. But um, again, you know, just like what happened yesterday, okay, uh, for the question on where we want AU to be, AU is us. African Union Haiti is us. We're going to have to pay attention for everything that's posted, that's been uh, given on AU pages. And if there's something, again, like I said, you know, uh, we, we can question that. Uh, people that complain about uh, dictatorship or uh, the human rights issue in Africa, we can point it out. And we're going to we'll come out just like we did yesterday and demand uh, African Union on whatever we are. And we're gonna start within our hometown. It's gonna start with people that are gonna be doing the groundwork in, in AU, which is gonna be Ethiopian, in Ethiop Ethiopian and, or African in total that live in Addis, should revolt or question AU. That's the ground right there. So uh, there's not, there's, it's not an embassy or anything else. Um, and I want to keep it African affairs to African affairs. We're not going to give any other opportunity to uh, uh, derail us from uh, one Africa movement. You know, uh, AU, yes, you know, it's put together by all African nations, and we have to respect them also because they're still standing, they're still fighting, except some of their fighting is not heard. It's like, oh, it comes from Africa. But if we make them stronger and if the issue is not heard, we as the people, we're supposed to be, I called yesterday, we are citizens of Africa. Don't forget, this is another word that I added yesterday. Then I just dawned on me, I said, listen, you are a citizen of Africa. As a citizen, that's where the unity starts because you are responsible as a citizen for what's going on to your, to your beloved Africa. So we can have that ground battle when it comes to really if uh, AU is not doing the right thing or they're not heard. If they're not heard, where are they going to put it? If it is a, uh, EU, we're here uh, all over the, the world. We can go and protest. Hey, listen, AU is putting this mandate. AU is asking this. How come you're not answering? So um, let's work as usual. We're going to have to work and work harder and harder, but smarter because this is not a, a battleground, like uh, uh, Professor Israel said, this is not just uh, an arm uh, war, but this is psychological warfare where we need to overcome that. we got to work smart, diligently, and we will make sure that our voice is heard. And yes, you know, we have a corrupted leadership, uh, and the way we're going to do it is they, they're not going to last forever. It's just um, every time that you have the right to vote, and if that vote is available, vote to who you believe in. I know there's other controversy that comes in, you know, like Junta, like you see it, you know, uh, they want to take over again, but they have no uh, no vision. If you, you have to have a vision in order to do certain movement within the African uh, continent and uh, all over the world. If that president or that leadership doesn't have a vision, it's just demand, demand, demand for 
no vision, we don't want him. And eventually, it, it start uh, degrading. Uh, he's uh, becoming a target of everything that he did wrong. And that's how we're going to teach our corrupt leaders, because we're going to point out to the corrupt leaders on what they're doing to the people of Africa, because they are our brothers and sisters. So that's how we stand in solidarity and think the right thing. Think the beauty for next neighbor. Love your neighbor again. I repeat it again. Love your neighbor because you start loving your neighbor. You start within yourself first. Love yourself. Understand what kind of movement you want to change. What, what do you want to change? What do you want to be heard? And once you start understanding and somebody start hearing you and somebody's getting you the answers, then you it's definitely your next neighbor that has questions that probably has problem, but just giving them a pure love and respect. Believe me, we can move forward. So Africa is not strange for loving one another, except once in a while we get a little uh, differences and let's stop raising ethnicity. Ethnicity is going to be destroying us. Ethnicity is personal. Ethnicity is with, within the cultures and stuff, but it should not raise you ethnic versus being African because you have to respect everybody's ethnicity, culture, language, everything that religious uh, religion, as long as we respect each other, believe me, we can develop one Africa. And again, uh, day 23 on this uh, podium, I said, this is a working platform. Every single of you that comment in here and that really uh, write about the love for Africa, you participating, go do some change. Go ask your government. Go back and ask what is right and what's wrong. And also, do not just come in with problem. Come with the solution. Because for every problem on this, this guy, there's always a solution. And I love you all. Uh, and just want to keep it short. Thank you very much, uh, Biggie. The voice, uh, the chief, uh, we thank you for your presence. And uh, I know Mika, Mika loves the chief. I love the voice. Me and Prof Kuru, we love the voice. <laughs> and um, I just want to welcome our thank brother, Sunny T. Sunny T, welcome. Hello? Hello, Sunny T. Hi. Wow. wow, it's good to have a lady. <laughs> thank you. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Well, I'll say, um, first, I want to say hi to everybody, the African family. Uh, lots of great points. I can hear, I, you know, learning from everybody, different points of view and their comments. So thanks for that. I just wanted to add, um, you know, this, these things have been said already, but I just want to add, it all starts with believing in ourself. Um, and I, and I want to put it out there to challenge each one of us, especially the ones that are uh, in the diaspora. Uh, I have a question for you guys. Are you willing, because you know, we, we, we want a lot of change. We want Africa to do better. Uh, we're talking about uh, unity um, uh, coming together, right? Like the previous caller saying, like get rid of, of all the tribes, which I, I agree, right? So all these things are great. But are, are, yeah, sorry. Yeah, did, so you, just, did you just say, did you just say get rid of the tribes? Why is that the case, may I ask? No, not get rid of, I should clarify. Not. I mean, love our tribes where, wherever each person comes from, but let's not make the tribe the highlight of our countries, right? Because that's where the division comes. So whether you're, you know, whatever tribe that you represent, of course, that's where we come from, but we can appreciate our tribes, but we don't have to highlight it and make it the difference in our uh, countries, right? A, a good example is Tanzania. I, I just like to use that example because there's so many tribes, but I, I don't know what tribe is what. They, I, you, know, you never he hear them speak of tribes. They're all one Tanzanian. They speak the same language, even though they have different tribes. So they don't focus on that though, right? And this is because of their leader, the past leaders that have 
um, have displayed that, have uh, told their people that we're one, we're one Tanzanians, we're not this tribe or that tribe, right? So that's what I mean by tribes, not completely get, you know, of course, be proud of where you are from, but that shouldn't be the highlight because this, this is the problem that's happening in, in East Africa too, like in Ethiopia where the Tigray and the Oromos and the Amhara and the different things, right? So we're like fighting for power you know, same thing in Kenya too. They, they, you know, even though they don't want to say, but there is a different tribes, and who's the ruling party of that tribe? You know, so you want to support, your, or you want to vote for that tribe because they're in your, they're part of your, uh, that you belong to them, right? So I, I just, I don't think that's important for us to highlight. I think we should highlight us being as Africans and and um, being one, even though uh, you know. Uh, highlighting our individual, where we come from, where you know how we, uh, what we belong to, it, it's all great. But that's not that shouldn't be the the division because we weren't like that before, before colonizations, right? So I want to challenge, uh, Madam, Madam, you do realize that Africa, if you go back to its history, five hundred years, um, it never was united, just like with Europe or Asia or the Middle East. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. We do realize Africa was never united in its history. If you look, if you go back to the kingdoms and chiefdoms of Africa, yeah. So there, we might not have been uh, united in every way. Of course, there's differences in all in families. Even there's differences, right? But so, is your argument that you're saying we should highlight the tribes? Is that what are you trying? No, to say? I said that Africans shouldn't like throw their um, tribal identity in the bin, just like how African tribes. Um, Forsaken their languages for European languages. Africa Mr. can R. unite in terms of economics, economics, Mi and learning Mr. from R. one another. Mr. R, Let do me you finish. Me? Africans should come together when it comes to um, many different areas: um, economics, business, and sciences. But people's tribes in Africa should be preserved. Of course, I'm not saying that we should get rid of it. Right? That's who makes us right. Preserve is one thing, but. We should not challenge or, or, or make one better than the other or make that a difference because your, your own tribe or where you come from, it, you know, that's, that's, that's um, of course, that's what makes us unique or make, what makes us different from the other uh, uh, groups, right? But I'm, what I'm saying to you is, uh, as a whole, the problem in Africa right now, most majority of this, you know, the conflict that's, that's taking place is because even if you look at past history, right? It's because, especially ever since independence happened for all these African countries, um, and the West used this, it's a playbook they used to divide and conquer Africa. They, they put one group against the other group. You know, that's what happened in Rwanda. The, the genocide, over a million people died because of that, you know? So it, it's the same formula that's happening uh, throughout Africa. Not only Africa, it happens in Asia, it happens in uh, South America. They, the West uses the same playbook over and over. Nigeria, the same thing, right? So I'm just saying, let's see beyond that. You know, of course, preserve what we're, we're uh, our cultural heritage, of course. That's, we need to know our history in order even to preserve it. We don't even know our history, to be honest. Like most people don't even know our true history before slavery, before 500 years ago, how was a Africa operating, how, we, you know, yeah, we were kingdoms and, and, and things like this, but do people know this, right? We don't really know who we really, really are. Like when you see other nations or other, uh, uh, I guess, white people come to Africa, they're treated better than the Africans that come to Africa because they associate whiteness with wealth and because they, they associate um, whiteness with, uh, you know, uh, they'll treat them better, they'll give them, uh, I don't know, monetary funds or something like that, right? So we've been uh, brain madam, again, uh, madam, again, which Africans are you associating with uh, majority, whiteness? Majority of Africa, if you go, if you go to anywhere in Africa, if you go to a restaurant, if you go to do some business, if you do to work with your own brother and sisters in Africa, um, even in the West, and I live in the West, right? So, uh, Madam, I, I don't believe you. There's, that's not the case, Madam. There's over 54 countries, 1,000 tribes, like... Who are you referring to that? You're focusing on tribes white again. People or foreigners. Uh, hold on, let me have a go. Let her speak. Let her speak. Let her speak, please. Let her speak. Let her speak. Thank you. 
Uh, Senu, yeah. just just uh, raise your points. I think um, uh, let us not be dragged into uh, the the question about the tribe. I think um, just continue with your point, and then uh, that will have his his his, his uh, flow, and then he can respond and and maybe ask those questions. Then we'll take it. Sure. From there. So sure. Just have your flow. Have yeah. your time. Uh, place your points, and then uh, we'll take it up uh, from there. And okay. that um, just give us some time. Uh, let Senu continue. And then I'm gonna ask Dr. R to also come in, and let uh, then John, then uh, it's you, and then we can take it from there. That you can place all your 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 points and argue every ag argument from others. Okay, okay, continue. Yeah, thank you. Um, so what I the challenge that I was saying to us, to, especially to the diasporas, especially us, like living outside, um, you know, we have a really big opportunity to make changes. To, because we see what the West is about. Most African, um, I guess, Africans that live in Africa, they don't really see the West. They see them, maybe they'll see them as friends, right? Um, they they want to, you know, the youth especially, they, you know, social media, they see, the, they see the good side of it. They don't really see the agenda part of it, even though more people are waking up. And the challenge I want to put out there is for us, if we're really, really going to make changes, we just can't talk, we got to also do the walk, right? So meaning that we should be able to um, go back and build, right? And not all of us, obviously, like, you know, uh, can go back, but if you have the belief in, in, in making changes in Africa, if you really, really believe in um, implementing changes, it cannot be from here. We can talk, we can give money, we can fund, but I think being, whether, you know, for the holidays, uh, uh, one million plus going to Ethiopia uh, to make, to march and make changes, that itself is a big, big opportunity for us to make changes. We, we need to go back and take control of our land, uh, of, of uh, the policy that's going on, because these governments that are heads, head of each state are making these decisions on behalf of the people, and the people are disconnected. They don't even know what's going on with the policy, with the changes that, with, with the decisions that these people are making, these head of states, right? So if we are aware, if we know what's going on, if the people know what's going on, I'm sure they wouldn't be able to pass or get away with, with what they're getting away with. They're giving um, our, our resources, everything on a silver platter, just like that for free. And the people are not benefiting from it, right? So if, if we want real change, we have to be willing to go back and build. And we've got, we've got everything there, right? It's just here, it's convenient. It's, I know it's hard to, to move and uh, pack and go, especially if you have kids and you have family and this and that, but you know, where did we grow up? Where, where, where did we come from? And, and who's gonna build our house if we leave and, and leave it somebody else to build it? Um, and uh, I just wanted to add the, uh, sorry, I forgot your name, the previous caller who was talking. He said, pay attention to the African Union, to their every move, which I, I agree 100%. Because the African Union is supposed to represent Africa as a whole. If something is going on, they're supposed to represent and speak on behalf of Africa. And they're not doing that. They're actually, um, you know, working with the European Union to, to, help their to help them benefit, not Africa. So I think us being more vocal but finding ways to make changes. Maybe we can also get a representative from each African uh, country, um, you know, to, to come on this panel and speak and then mobilize the youth, the youth, right? Um, to, to go to the headquarters and, and, and march, you know, to say no more. Um, yeah, so, that's, it's so those are some of the points that I just wanted to add. Okay. So thanks for letting me speak. I have Thank one thing you. to say, uh, Israel, okay. uh, if okay. you don't mind. Uh, uh, one of the can, can I can can I ask that we let's let the let let's let uh, this thing flow because uh, I still have three more people and I see there's more people that are uh, that want to also join the, the the conversation, and we are only left with an hour. So can I just ask that we we go to the next people then? No, no problem. That, it was a, just a quick uh, a reminder uh, through the ethnicity and all that that's, uh, that we were discussing. Uh, I just want to say each nation in Africa should be called Ethiopia, 
Tanzania, the people unite without the ethnicity. That's what Dr. Abi is trying to pass on. First, you're Ethiopian when you're born. When you die, you're Ethiopia. That means there's no ethnicity that should be included in your being as one Ethiopian. The ethnicity is the one that divided for centuries and centuries. So now we're uniting within the nations, and then the nation united, they create a united one Africa. So each nation should understand there are Ethiopians, Tanzanian, Kenyan, Rwandese, Burundi, Nigerian. Understand you are Nigeria first. You are Ethiopian first. So that's the movement that starts without the ethnic group because Dr. Avi is leading that in an uh, example. And uh, yesterday, like I said, you know, we were holding hands already for the first time with all this uh, COVID-19 that we have. Without hesitance, we held hand. And I don't know who was next to me. It's just, I know he's another sister from Ethiopia, another brother from Ethiopia. And in fact, we had some other people from a different country that was holding hand with us. I just want to put that out there. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. R. Um, uh, Dr. R. Yes. Welcome, brother. Can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I'd like to respond oh. to um, um, the last person. I forgot, what, I don't know what his name is, but I'd like to ask him a question yes. since he's from you. Ethiopia. So, oh, uh, Biggie. Uh, yes, go the ahead. last person that spoke. Yeah, Biggie. Cool. You can ask, uh, Doctor. Go ahead. Uh, I'll just let the last, next person go. I'll come back to him. Okay. Um, uh, then we can go to uh, Brother John. Hey. Brother John. Um, Brother John is not alive. Let, 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 let me go. Uh, let, let's give uh, that because uh, he had a lot of pointers that he wanted to ask. Then uh, I'll give it to you, uh, uh, Niger. Uh, All right. Dad. Okay, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, uh, Mr. Walgas. Okay, okay. That's good. Thank you very much for, for mentioning the last name as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> people never do as well. I've been I'm making trying, a lot of points. Yeah. <laughs> Malgas. Malgas is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, a, a warrior. But anyway, um. I've been trying. I've, I've I've been trying to push forward and actually talk about a certain idea for a long, long time now. It's only now that I start. I start hearing that I'm, it's been heard and it's been spoken about. From the last discussion I had, I'm really happy. I mean, I was listening to this conversation from the beginning, but um, I've, I've enjoyed what I've heard so far from all the way from uh, I, Professor Nati and Ezra and what Tunaja has to say. And I've got a, a question for Dr. R at the moment. It, it's, it's not a very complex question, but um, it's good. One thing I can say is um, it's interesting to hear that the African Union, uh, with the money sponsored to them by the European Union and the uh, other Western external powers, they use this money at the end of the day to end up going party, drinking, and all of that stuff. It's, it's, it's really sad and depressing. It's not that the institutions are the problem. It's that the, the institutions are not functioning based on who's functioning, who's fun funding them. Be, the institutions are not functioning according to us because of who's funding them. Who's funding them is happy with the state of the, 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 the dysfunction that's happening at our institutions. They're happy with it, so they're not interfering with it. So in, in a case, it raises who has to hold these African leaders accountable? You understand? Who has to hold them accountable? Nations are built based upon the people themselves. If the people have not been developed to a certain extent, the people always produce the type of... Like, look at the Gambia recently. 
They've complained throughout the past years of this bad leader that they had. But election time comes, they elected the same leader again. Why? Because he had more money being funded from the European Union and Germany. And this guy went across Gambia making a bigger, bigger campaign than everybody. And he was re-elected. Even all the intellectuals in Gambia, they, 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 they were voting the same person. So the people are not ready. So the people have to be brought on to speed as well. And the way I say, many people, say, how do you bring people into speed? Oh, you bring people into speed by uh, making them knowledgeable. I mean, where do people consume information? They consume information from the media, the news, uh, the television, the music they hear, the schools they go to, and many other means as well. But if all those means are controlled by a government that's controlled by another external government, where are you going to get, where are you going to educate your people to think the right way you want them to think? You know what I'm saying? So I've always been fascinated, not fascinated necessarily, with the alternative right in the West. How they managed to get Donald Trump elected? How they managed to get uh, Boris Johnson and many other right-wing people, uh, extreme right-wing people all over Europe and America, how they managed to get them elected? It's not because the mainstream media loved them. The mainstream media didn't love them. You understand? So the main, mainstream media pushed them to the fringes. But these people managed to circulate an idea on the online space enough to get the, to get the results they want, in order to, enough to change the mindset. And they moved from the fringe into the mainstream. They moved from the fringe into the mainstream. So we are not, what we're talking about, Pan-Africanism has been pushed to the fringe. So we now need to move from the fringe to the mainstream, but the mainstream media is controlled. All over Africa, education system is controlled. All over newspapers are controlled. Sometimes they even shut down the internet access. But the internet is improving in Africa. We need to make sure we move from the fringe and, 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 and propagate our ideology right across the African continent. That way, it's not... There will be people that have different ideas. There will be people that have different beliefs and all that, right? But we need to have the majority. We need to have the majority mindset in order to make to make action come through as well. So when I say alternative media, I'm talking about species like this, conversations like this. We need to have them on a lot more scale so that people can gravitate to that. So eventually, honestly, I think this is how things are going to progress based on my observations on how it happened in the West. I think this is how things will progress. You understand? A revolution is coming in Africa. Right? A revolution is coming in Africa. Now, the, the last revolution that happened is the Arab Spring. Now, it didn't work very well for the Arabs, did it? Because their whole entire means of communication was dominated. So this revolution is coming for Africa next. How can we make sure that it works in our favor? How can we make sure that the African Union it works in our favor, works for us? How can we make sure our regional bodies work for us? How can we make sure that that uh, we elect the right leaders, right uh, leaders that think along the same line so that when they go to the African Union level or regional body level, they are able to collaborate. How can we make sure we produce the same leader? It's by us propagating our ideology of unity. Of this. Many of our intellectual leaders from Sheikh Ante Job to, to, uh, to Malcolm X to Kwame Krumah, all of them spoke, this is the only solution for Africa. And I believe so is that a collaboration, Pan-African collaboration is the solution forward. And I believe in it as well. So I, 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 I think this is what, we must move away from the Kumbaya internet. It's, it's an economic collaboration, trade. We need to trade along with each other internally a lot more. And this is some things that I've actually had to learn and hear from. Like I, 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 I accept tonight just idea of security is important, but some of these countries don't even bother to secure themselves. We need to produce the right type of leaders to secure the continent. You understand what I mean? So how do we gauge that? We have to, and they need to be held accountable. How are they held accountable? We must control the political mood in Africa to make sure we produce the right leaders all the time. So this, this, this is what I think we must do. It's an information warfare we are at. This is an information warfare. Everybody else is participating in, our, in it except us. Well, we're doing it now on this space over here, but 
in three years' time, the internet will be widespread in Africa, and we need to have our voice there as well. Um, what, what can I say? Um, Mr. R, I agree with you that um, Africa, we were different and we were diverse. We were different with were diverse people. I, I can see that. But I think we are more similar than different, to be honest. We are actually more similar than different. But at the same time, don't you think, even though we're diverse, don't you think we can embrace our diversity and respect our diversity, but at the same time collaborate to uplift each other? Mr. R. I end it there. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, my brother. Yes, we, sh we should embrace each other and work together. I just wanted to say is in reality, Africa, we could come together when it comes to trading and learning from each other, just like in, just like any other continents. I just some countries in Africa might come together, some will might not might not come together. Some will might form a union, some might not form a union. But I get where you're coming from. Yeah, I, I think I think right to have actual tangible results, right? Tangible results. I think I think I even heard it from Wanda Maria. What, is, what makes people actually start to understand it is if they interact with each other. When they start to dis, disband of the borders and start interact with each other more, and especially interact with each other on an economic level, then they start to care about each other's problems. You know what I mean? So I think we can at least accept that, respect our differences, but at least accept that. On that, that's what the new type of Pan-Africanism is speaking about. I mean, it's, it, it's not really new because the old president spoke about that. It's just people back then didn't understand what it really meant. So the movement was killed. You know what I mean? We need to revive the movement. I, I know you, Mr. Aaron, you're not much of a Pan-Africanist, but you can agree at least we can collaborate with each other to uplift with each other. You can agree with that, Mr. Aaron. Uh, Dad, if, if, if I can interrupt, I think Senutu was saying what you, just, what you just said now, and I think you were questioning her when she was saying, raising something similar to what you just said about the tribes and whatnot. Yeah, no, no, no problem with that. I, I think I just have to reiterate that and get Mr. R uh, because I've heard him many times where he seems to be against anything. It, it makes it seem like he's he's not really up for collaboration, but really that's not what he's saying. What he's saying is we are different, we are diverse, and we must respect that. Yes, but we are actually we're more similar than we're diverse. We, um, how can we um, implement tribal? I mean, how can we implement Pan Africanism? Like, how can we um, develop this model? Because uh, uh, how can, can I use an analogy? How can I use an analogy? Can I, can I take that? I think um, if you want, you see, let me give you a simple analogy. You have football teams that you support, don't you? Some people support Arsenal, some people support Real Madrid, you know, Man United, stuff like that. But yet, when their nations are playing, they change tact, don't they? They support their nations. So it's not so complicated. You can be diverse, be your Ghanaian, be your, you know, uh, Ashanti, uh, you know, whatever you want to be, Twa. But when it comes to a bigger, the bigger stage where we're talking about mm. the African issue, you go mm. African, you know. When you talk about national issue, you go national. And mm. at the heart of it is this conflict issue where we keep having and we keep getting caught by it on our ways. And we can say all we like here, we are not controlling what is happening on the ground right now. And this is why I keep saying you have to look for efficient ways to get the best out of the system, what is on the ground right now. And that's why I highlighted the African Union Security Council. I, I also talked about demanding these things from governments. Like if, if you want to protest against government, don't protest about fuel prices or protest about bread of uh, price of bread. It may not be, you know, everyday thing, but demand better security for your country. All those little things that you are demanding for is hitting the heads, the people that are in big positions. Like if you demand more security forces for your country, the military is hearing it, the police is hearing it, they'll be on mm -hmm. your side. You start becoming the establishment yourself. Mm -hmm. All the forces and, oh, will join you. Mm -hmm. And also, Mr. R, um, how can these countries, even though they're interested, of course, we want to get to a state where it can be somewhat of a federal level. We have fed regional federal bodies as well. We want to get to a state. And I would like to see the African Union supersede the United Nations, to be honest. I would like to see the African Union replace the United Nations. And I want us on a regional level to operate as federal, as federal way we respect our uh, nation states as we were. You understand? But the, the fact is, when I look at it right now, 
how Rwanda, Mozambique, and Kenya are working together to quell the security situation. That's a form of collaboration to create stability. How Gambia, Senegal, and Guinea-Bissau are working together to build a new uh, 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 dam, to build a new dam for electric power as well. This is an initiative pushed forward by the Senegalese president as well. We want that collaboration. So this type of collaboration that's going to benefit the entire region on an infrastructure scale, we want that, uh, Dr. A. This is our, these are tangible Pan-Africanist ideas as well. How Ivory Coast and Ghana are working together to control the Okoko export. These are tangible results we want. These are Pan-Africanist ideals away from loving each other and all that. It's not about loving each other, Dr. I. It's about helping each other to come up. Yeah, and somebody was uh, saying that, I, I keep talking about African Union because uh, uh, France and this thing. You see, this is the thing I'm talking about. Some people like to find problems to every solution and then they freeze. They don't move anymore. You have to move because if you don't move, they will own it. If you don't move and to try to alter the way your leaders behave, they will own it. You have to start demanding that you become part of the establishment, be, be the establishment too. You can replace the establishment by making an, 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 an argument for the establishment itself. Because if your government is not keeping the country secure, do you think the military they are happy? Do you think anybody wants to join the military to, to feel like they don't have the right weapons, they are the useless military of the world? They are, they are people that are proud people. If you say you want a, a professional military for your country, for once, you will have the government in, on the back foot, which is what not Africans, Africans don't ask for that. They, they will be on the back foot because now you have the masses saying, we want our country secure, and the government want to think about that. If the African Union is being controlled by the, the European Union, and just like our countries are being controlled, you can influence them too by putting pressure on them. This is how leaders behave. If you don't put pressure, and if they don't, if you don't put pressure, you will replace them, isn't it? You will replace the governments in your countries, and then the people that will go to Africa, you know, will change. So you have to put pressure on these institutions, and sometimes it forces them to think. Some of them are so old; they were alive when they were colonial. The colonial era was on. Some of them, many of them were alive during the colonial era. How can they think differently? Like how can they think like us? If you don't press them, they won't see it. Okay. Um, I just uh, want to give. Can I respond? Um, just can um, I just want to give a, 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 a brother John? He's been waiting for far too long, and uh, you guys will will have a turn again, uh, brother John. Yeah, yeah. Hello everyone. Sorry about that. <laughs> There's no problem. It's no problem. It's all right. Thank you so much. You know, I have to get from everybody. All right. So quickly, let me go deep on this. First of all, I'd like to greet everyone. You're all doing an amazing job. Wonderful ideas. Wonderful insight being shared. Thank you very much. It's so great to learn at your feet. All right, so quickly, I'm going to be speaking on two points. Uh, the first is, um, what, what do I want to say? Uh, ethnicity. See, when a people do not believe or when a people have not, how do I put this now? When a people have not discovered how they can be of benefit to each other, they will never unite. That is the problem with Africa. If we cannot find, find a way our economic, our economic depression, if we, cannot, if we cannot find a way, for example, Nigeria, if the Igbos cannot find you know, friendship, you know, uh, friendship with the, the North and the Yoruba, and we cannot see how we can benefit ourselves economically, we would there will be ethnic tension in the country in Africa. That is just it. The problem with Africa is economic. We need economic strength. We need our economic strength. If that is why you see the white people are so strong, like they look the same, they don't argue with themselves because the, the economy of the world has been put on their shoulders. So if we don't solve that problem first, if we don't look for a way to you know, to make everyone have equal share of prosperity, to make, you know, you from the other tribe, uh, I'm from the, uh, from the uh, you know, from the previous tribe, if we don't see a way that we could benefit each other, there's no way that we are going to be friend to friends. So let's establish that. Now, the second point is I want to speak on somebody talking about 
Africa being corrupt, Africa being corrupt. No. Africa is corrupt, yes, I agree, but it's not the major problem. The problem with Africa is scarcity. Africa, what, what Africa is having is that the resources are not in, I'm not talking about natural resources, but the monetary resources, you know, that has to go around and not, it's not enough. Now, I'll, I'll tell you why. If you go and if you Google the first 50 corrupt countries in the world, you won't find a single African country there. Is it okay? Google it first 20. The America and the UK and those countries, they are, they are there. But you, you know why? You know why you can't see it? Because they are prospering. You won't see those, those, uh, the loophole in their system because, you know, it looks as if they have so much, so much that can go around. So they, you know, they kind of play the saints. But the problem with Africa is that there is so little to go around. There is so little. So now, how do we begin to solve this? Like I said, the first thing, our diaspora, the African diaspora, you see, Africa is well positioned. If you look at the diaspora, if you look at what, what we have back home, we just need to come to a common understanding. Once, once we know this, honestly, we'll, we can turn Africa, we can convert Africa to the biggest trading spots in the world. That's what, that's, what I, that's what I'm aiming at. So what we should be looking at is how we can evolve our economy. And we cannot evolve our economy. We need, like I said, we need the right leaders in place. Two, we need people with the right, right mindset to be able to do that. That's what we need. How do we do this? First of all, let's see how we can make Africa a trade spot for the world. Africa has so many raw materials. It needs to be processed. Africa has so many... Uh, Africa has huge labor. They, they need to get job in manufacturing. Africa has so many things. But the problem is that we have so much, but we have very few people, very few people who are willing to labor. Look at now, for example, China is coming to build the roads. China is coming to build the factories. China is building everything because they are seeing what we are not seeing. So I feel that Africa really needs to open open its eyes. Africa needs to wake up. So uh, I think I would like to round up here. Thank you very much. And uh, it's so great to learn at your feet. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Brother uh, John. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to ask uh, uh, our minister, Nati, uh, who's my co-host. And um, he's the one who's been, uh, we came up with this topic uh, about African identity and pan-Africanism and going back to the roots. So uh, um, our Minister of Education, I'm going to ask you to, 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 I know there's a lot of points raised and whatnot. Um, just uh, tackle whichever ones you want to tackle um, and uh, uh, go back to the questions again. Thank you so much, Ezra. I, I just wanted, uh, amongst the panelists, uh, R, or I don't know how to, what his name is. Dr. R, yeah, Dr. R. Dr. R uh, has been asking questions, but he has not given uh, an input. So I, I, I want to hear uh, what you would like to say before I come in, because he's been posing uh, important questions, but he has not really... Uh, given uh, an input from his own perspective. So I would like to give him a, a couple of minutes to express himself. Dr. R? Yes, yes, hello. I just wanted to respond to the brother John about Africa and China and the important topic of um, industrialization. I believe that Africa can be a very prosperous continent, but the issue is we need to um, ban foreign aid and if you're going to do business with foreign countries, you must not let them do the work for you. You have to get the skills. You have to have, you have, to have the knowledge transfer. And you have to have nationalistic leaders who are going to make who are going to take their country towards prosperity. Because what's the point of bringing a foreigner from China to build you a factory? Should it be the Chinese man or the foreigner teaching you the skills in how to build the factory or how to build a vaccine manufacturing plant? in order to make your country into a trillion dollar economy, God willing. But that's what's hampering Africa, the corruption. And that's what makes my heart break. Why can't Africa, even with the richest countries in Africa, hasn't invested billions into um, manufacturing vaccines 
or specializing in a trade like um, manufacturing medicine or um, healthcare, just like in those European countries. Like the Italians are good at making um, luxury shoes. The French are good at making um, uh, perfume, for example. Uh, Dr. R, if I can answer you uh, regarding a question of vaccines and uh, pharmaceuticals, I think uh, a lot of countries are interested in doing that. They've got plans, Nigeria included. I know they're trying to Rwanda also, make sure Rwanda. that. Yeah, even Rwanda, even Kenya, even South Africa. South Africa has some some manufacturing of, of, of uh, uh, what do you call this, many pharmaceutical companies that manufacture. Uh, even the vaccines, there are already a couple of companies that have... Um, already having set up their facilities and whatnot. So um, there's there's lots of countries with plans. Others are, have started rolling out. Others already have a, a, a base where they want to start. So I, I think um, to answer you in, in terms of one of the questions there, but you can continue. Uh, Dr. Al. I think he may be done or disappeared from the this scene. Um, I get what he want. He's talking about this economic stuff. I, I, I don't want people to make the mistake. That, uh, I think people will make the mistake of thinking that eco uh, this in economy comes before security. We have been making that mistake for a long time, and it hasn't solved anything. Ethiopia went, right, right economic, uh, Ethiopia, uh, went for economic growth. Look at what they've got now. Security came to buy them again. Nigeria went for economic growth. Security comes to buy them. And many African countries that haven't had this problem, they are living, they are living in some kind of um, just in um, paradise that is actually false, because any moment the system can be compromised. You, it, it's like walking around with a compromised immune system. If you have a compromised immune system, you may not catch anything the first day, second day, or Sunday. If you keep rolling the dice, every day you survive, you are rolling the dice. And this is why I think you we have, whatever we are doing with the economy, if you improve security, the economy will improve automatically. Look at North Korea. North Korea didn't say, okay, let's improve the economy first. Because if they did, they will have to cut out a lot of things they had to prioritize their security first and they are stronger for it today um iran the same thing if they wanted economic growth they could have, could have sh and went for economic growth but look at um, iraq iraq decided to disarm didn't it and uh, libya decided to put economy first because he didn't like the sanctions he, he disarmed himself look at libya today look at iraq all the countries that try to do the right thing by saying oh let's disarm ourselves which is the wrong thing to be fair any self-respecting nation that wants to be taken seriously knows they are supposed to have strength to be able to compete uh, in this world uh, to niger how do you think these african countries should avoid the same fate as syria or um iran in terms of like these foreign countries that want that are controlling these countries in Africa and other third world countries, in terms of shrugging off their dominance, yeah, like I'll give an example, I'll give an example of um, um, dominance. Um, they don't, they don't sorry, we can't, sorry, we can't hear you. Dr. R, can you speak? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes, the point I'm trying to make is um, Syria is an independent country with zero debt. But they, but the, but these Western countries did, didn't like how Syria was moving, and now they have that war going on in that country. How do you think Africa can move towards being independent? Um, well, Africa is slightly different from Syria because we are bigger than Syria. But Syria paid the price. I'd say Syria is one of those countries that had. You know, they pay the price, even if they have security. They won the war, remember? Um, the Syrian government, in the end, succeeded in the, defeating the rebels, but still they destroyed their country.
because they are not strong enough to repel all the forces that were trying to destabilize their country. And the same thing is happening to Ethiopia right now. We, we see these things on our continent all the time, even in Nigeria. Because if you are not strong enough, we, this is what you should expect. We should not think economy is not, economy is tied to security, just as security is linked to economy. They are all tied together. You have to see security as part of the economy. As a matter of fact, when you study some level of engineering, I find that very interesting because they actually, in engineering, they regard um, economy as security and security as economy. So the, the, the two are linked. If you have one, you are likely to have the other one. But if you compromise security, Odds are that the economy one you are living on borrowed time. It's common sense. We all know this. Any Nigerian that is sitting here knows that most Nigerians are buildings, they have iron bars and iron gates everywhere, you know, gating everywhere. Because we don't want somebody to come and steal our stuff. But in our national outlook and posture, we don't do the same thing. It's, it's so obvious. And that's one of the biggest holes in African uh, we are, uh, societies today. Identity is another big one. We don't have a good sense of whom we are. Most of us here know that people on the street think we don't have enemies. As a matter of fact, when you search Google for Nigeria, you'll see enemies zero. I was like, Jesus Christ, that's a lie. Because if you search Kenya today, you'll say enemies zero. It's like, nah, that's a lie. Because we have enemies. This, this is why we are the way we are today. And we have to learn how to get out of this kind of mindset. And it's by educating the people. And to educate the people, we've talked about this. Most people talk about education. You go to the schools. No. You have to go over the head of the leaders now. You have to go where they don't expect you. This is the nature of conflicts. As a matter of fact, if you want to fight an enemy, you don't go where they should expect you. You should move in a way that they can't predict where you're going to show up. Because that is where they are not guarding, and that's where you make big breakthrough. They are not expecting people to show up at the African Union uh, Security Council, uh, Peace and Security Council, do they? But when they yeah. see people showing up there from nowhere, they'll be like, okay, we are on the man here. We are just we're just kept here as food, food soldiers. What is going on? <laughs> we have to give them <laughs> they will surrender. To Niger. And you know, uh, people are thinking that we really need to have big organizations, really. Of course, to a certain extent, we need to have minute organizations that probably think to a certain extent. But people think we need to have big organizations. But the fact is, every time we have organizations, we are just a shooting, like, a, 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 what do you call it? A, 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 a shooting target. We're just a, a target. You understand know I me? Mean? Because those organizations get targeted and they get influenced and they get corrupted and always you end up having people that really mean well they end up becoming murdered and dying for us mm. and no and then we just forget about it so this is what i say, say do we really need to have or do we need to find a way to move very flexibly and fluidly and impervious so that they cannot see they cannot see or predict where we're gonna pr come up at any time but at the same time we're able to maintain a way of cohesion do you understand what i mean so they cannot really track where we are or what we do at any time, but they can see the results that happen. Do you understand the concept I'm yeah, trying to talk about? I have a movement, like in a way, I'm sorry to say that um, I think there was this way that Islamic State was operating while like outsourcing their terrorism and all that nonsense. In a way, that the the, the this the, the method is similar, where you you people can operate autonomously from any yeah. location. The idea is still Pan-Africanism because, see, Zionism didn't start off massive, too. It was just a meeting between certain people in certain rooms, and today they've created one of the most powerful countries in the world. And they don't even have the resources Africa has. No, mm. they don't have the manpower Africa has. We have the capacity to do great things if we put our mind into these things. Like you are saying, move in a way that they cannot expect. And this is why I'm saying too, don't expect to go through the education system because they expect you there. They are used to that. They've been doing that for decades. Go in directions they can't expect. Because remember, these Western people too, many of their leaders are old school too. Many of them are over 60. They don't understand this modern world. 
<laughs> they don't understand this modern world as much as we, the younger ones in uh, Africa, do now. And most yeah, of true, uh, true, true. Do. So you move in a way they cannot, they don't see you coming. And, and I, don't, I don't think that we should be afraid to speak out our ideas. You know that kind of effect where you know that you know that there's a problem coming or you know there's a punch coming, but you can't stop it. Do you know what I mean, Tunaja? You know where there's something coming, but you can't stop it. So I don't, I don't, I think we have all the advantage to win as much as possible if we grow the movement as much as possible. I tell you, there's a revolution coming in Africa. We need to add energy to it. We need to add energy to it and we need to stay it our way. So you see, like, there's information war happening in Africa between the French and the Turkish and the Russians. Now the French can't push the Russians away. So the French are having to compete with the Russians for information. So what can we Pan-Africanists do in this in this arena of conflict between the Russians, the French, and the Turkish who, to win over yeah. our people? What can we do? This is why I'm saying that we should force the leaders to declare a moratorium on armed conflict between Africans. Because what I fear is going to happen is that they, would, they want to use our continent for war, to fight their proxy wars. Mm. And we don't want that to happen. So if we put a moratorium on conflicts on the continent, that prevents, helps prevent that. Because now they know the, if they go after cause one problem in one country, the whole African countries are going to be on their case. You see what I mean? Because the Europeans know this too. They are not stupid. This is why they created NATO. If you attack one NATO country, the others will gang up against you. England cannot attack France. France cannot attack England. How are we not even learning from this? Because you know, one, the other one will attack them. The other you know, you know, the, this right. environment that we have right now, this coalition where you have East Africans, West Africans, Somalians, uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Ann, I'm not trying to put you down. We have different types of East Africans here. This is an example of the unity that we're trying to, we're trying to build, right? Why can't we extend that forward into the entire continent? Like this ideology where we come in together. We don't have to have an organization. We can have fringe organizations, but we don't need, really need an, 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 an organization that you know it can be easily, it's like a, it's like a, a bullseye, a, a, a shooting point. You know what I mean? We can just move malleably. And that's how the alternative right did it. You know what I'm saying? How were they able to recognize each other with their right haircut? Right, they can tell each other by the right haircut they had, and they are able to propagate ideologies to get right wing leaders all across Europe and America. We can do the same thing. You understand? It's, it, yes, there will be de detractors and regressive people, but we just have to be the majority. You understand? We need to not have murders anymore because people keep dying for us for no reason. You know, people keep coming and say, "I'll stand for Africa. I'll build an organization for Africa." And organization gets sub subverted. I'll stand for Africa and they keep dying. We need to stop this and, and all that stuff. And we need to individually rise in our own capacity as well to stop from the, to stop the funding of our own organization. In fact, we don't actually need organizations. We need to just spread that a, a, a ideology, a type of thinking right across yeah. Africa. And if you do it right across Africa, it's easier. This is what you mean. It's easier to target anybody. Uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, 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 I'm sorry to, to cut you, uh, but we, we, we left with like 10 minutes. And um, I'll ask um, uh, our brother Nati and Mika if we can have part two, and then we can finish this because I, I, I see a lot of solutions coming from you guys. And uh, I think it will be nice to have you guys uh, start with the session. I think uh, two Niger. And Malgas, maybe they can join us just after um, uh, Nati um, uh, does his presentation. Or you, can, you guys can also prepare some presentation if you want and come and share and then people can join and we can try to get solutions and, and uh, a way forward. So I'm just going to ask uh, Brother Rich because he's been asking to, to, to say a few words. And then we're going to go back to Nati for him uh, to close and answer the questions. And then um, hopefully tomorrow we'll have part two of this. You guys can join again. Because Wednesday Man. we're having a book review. Wednesday we're having a book review with uh, Prof. Kuru. And uh, there's a lady, I just forgot her name. But yeah. So I'm just oh, going to ask uh, Rich to, to, to jump in quickly. Uh, uh, two minutes, brother. And then... Man, um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Should I go? Yeah, you can go, Rich. Okay. 
Um, man, it's so exciting to hear you guys talk like this. Right now, I've been, from since this session has started, I've been standing up in my office. I haven't been seated. <laughs> I've been standing because this is really good. And I can't wait till tomorrow for all your topics. I actually look forward to talk to you guys. And I don't really know any of you. That's the amount of power that we have right now. So uh, I think that one, right? Econ economics is important. It's important to get, for us to get our economics together. But before we get our econo um, economics together, we need to build things to defend ourselves. If we don't build any weapons, if we don't create mil military strategy on the continent, we are going to build a house and sun, and they're going to come back and they're going to destroy it again, just like how they did Libya. Because Gaddafi made a big mistake. One big mistake he made was to give up his weapons. Anybody who tells you you don't have a right to preserve your right to self-preservation and self-development is your worst enemy. That's a person that's not supposed to be near to you. And that's a person you, that's a person you, have, to, you have to watch that person. Ah, you get rid of them before they get rid of you. Because look at what they did to Gaddafi. Gaddafi, all he wanted was peace. This man, this man created a bloodless revolution 40 years ago and ended up dying in a bloody one. Look at that. Just look at that. So we have to learn from these lessons. If somebody don't want you to reserve your right to self-development, uh, self-development and self-preservation, this is not the person that you're supposed to be dealing with. This is a person you're supposed to be on the offensive with. Not, uh, uh, not even defensive, offensive. Next thing is that we have to realize that Africa is a continent that 75% of Africa is surrounded by water. We don't have a lot of friends because the ones that are not, are, all of them are our enemies. I don't see no friends up there. Saudi Arabia is the enemy. Um, uh, uh, all these European countries are enemies. Those that are across the, the, the Mediterranean, they're all our enemies. And one more thing also, one of the ways we can start to engage with them, not just react to what they do to us, because we are reacting what, to what they do to us constantly, right? From the beginning, they have been pushing our people south on the continent because they came from the north and they're still pushing from the north. And, they, and, 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 our, and our people are still going south. The incursion has not been, um, has not stopped yet. You know? yep. It has not stopped yet. The incursion is still going on, it's, but it's not going on. It's a crusade, but it's not going on uh, about religion anymore. Now they're coming with this excuse about freedom and democracy. This is a new crusade. And we have to, the Africans on this planet, we have to make the Europeans move from a place of containment to a place of problem resolution. What I mean by that is that we have to stress them. When they come to our continent to get our resources, we stress them. We make them know that there's a price to pay if you're gonna come here and kill our people. I heard that they killed two people, a French killed two people in Burkina Faso and the Burkina Faso president apologizing to these people. Wow. Is this true? Um, I don't think, I've not heard that. If this, true, sure. then, if this is true, if this is true, then he need to go. He need to go for real, not even an exception, because two of our people died and so many more were injured. And he apologized to the French for being there when the French not supposed to be there in the first place. So we have to make them. Do you see what those people are doing in Burkina Faso? Stop yeah, the that's true. All the things? That's true. That's that Burkina where... Faso president is, is, is a problem. That's, that, that guy is a right puppet. The only one that's really operating correctly is the Malian president. And I'm not even sure about this new Guinean president. Okay, well, you know what? You know what? But this is what I'm saying. We have to make them move from a place of containment. Virgin, they are containing us. They have been containing Africans from the time that they encountered us when they realized we built kingdoms and they couldn't even light fire yet. They have been containing us from then. We have to make them move from a place of containment to a place of problem, resol problem resolution or conflict resolution. And that means we have to stress them. When they come in with their tanks, when they come in with their tanks, plant plant mind where the tanks are running and stress them and stress them and stress them and stress them until they dis until they give up and we don't give up and we don't give up on anything and one more thing before i go just just a couple of seconds is that we also uh we also have to realize that this is not some short war we're involved in here this is a long war this is a long war that's gonna be that's going to probably go on for thousands of years because the Europeans, do, they do not like to pay for what they want. They do not like to lose and they don't like to negotiate. When they came uh, to uh, Africa, uh, yeah. there was no elections. 
There was no debates. There was no negotiations. They took our land and now they want compensated for it. So all I'm saying is that this is a long war and a revolution is not just a government get, getting, getting moved out the way, a bad government getting moved out the way and then we say, oh, we can rest now. A revolution must be maintained. It must be maintained. It cannot be maintained and it cannot be maintained without weapons. That's, mm. what, that's what I have to say. Thank you very much, Brother Rich. Uh, before Biggie, I give you the platform. Uh, our sister has been uh, just in closing our sister. Just two minutes, Sunny T. Okay, thank you. Um, so I, I completely agree with the previous caller. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, Loud good, yeah. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I, I, I completely agree with the previous caller, uh, commentator, um, everything that he was saying. So we definitely, definitely, it is a time now to to wake up ourselves and wake up your neighbor you know your friend your family members i know our family members are the most hardest uh people to convince them to you know to believe in the african uh dream to believe in in, in what we're fighting for right so i'm sure because I, I i have that issue with within my family you know uh trying to show them that you know going back and and, and contributing to africa um uh, development, they think I'm crazy. They think that, you know, you know, it's not developed, it's not safe. That's the thing that they, they would say, it is not safe to go back to Africa. And you're African yourself, you know? So um, just to continue this conversation with our family friends who don't have the same um, way of thinking, um, because really, like, you know, we're, the, the governments of each individual countries uh, there are a few that you can count with one hand that are good uh, leaders, but most of them are not. And if we don't, as individuals, if we don't take charge, if we don't, uh, you know, put our foot on the ground and try to fight back and try to take control economically, you know, the doctors, the nurses, the lawyers, or, you know, the engineers, um, business owners, we need to go back and build these things in Africa and also... Um, share uh, the knowledge that we have with other Africans, not just, you know, uh, our own little countries, you know, that, uh, you know, that we don't only look out for, right? So as Africans as, as one, you know, so if I, if my country wins, your country wins, right? And, and so forth. So I think it, it's, 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 it's not the time just to talk, talk, talk. It's time to make change. It's time to, to, to take action, I myself, I'm pushing myself to do that, right? So we all need to take actions and make ch and, and 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 be willing to to make change. Go back, and and you know everything has to do with money. So, like Europe, yeah, uh, African Union, they're you know the the people that fund them are the Europeans, the the Americans or whatever, right? Not Africans. So, of course, who's who's their boss then? Who are they going to follow? Who's giving them the funding? So African Union has been a joke, to be honest, uh, the way it's going. They don't fight. They don't speak anything that's happening in Africa to, 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 uh, to, to the youth, what's happening in Burkina Faso, uh, West Africa in general, right? So I think it's, it's up to the people, like the regular people, us, from the bottom up. It ain't going to happen from the top to the bottom. It's not going to happen. It hasn't happened in the past you know, 50, 60 years. So if it hasn't taken, we haven't seen any change in the 50, 60 years. How is it going to continue getting better if we don't, if we're not willing to make that change? And I, and I would love to see more women as well empower more women speaking because um, it's not about man or woman, but it's just having that balance, you know, believing in us and, and um, helping to move forward. So thank you so much. It was, it was really uh, amazing listening to everybody, learned a lot, continue to learning, and I look forward to the next conversation. Okay. Um, I'm just going to give uh, Niger uh, one minute, uh, and then I'm going to give um, uh, Mr. Malgas one minute as well, and then we go to Biggie. Then uh, our, our minister will close, uh, Nati. Yeah, One minute, please, like, guys. I, I like, don't worry, don't worry, I'll break it, all right? 
I know you will. <laughs> so I would like I would like to thank the lady uh, for coming uh, in to uh, talk, and I really appreciate the fact that uh, I think this struggle will, you know, women will contribute greatly to it. Um, and uh, it will be important for them to for also have their voices in this uh, struggle too. Um, you know, an example of situations like that is like in uh, the UK here, there was a protest that was about to happen and um, there were black people and white people in the protest, but they, were, they put the white people in front just in case the police people showed up. So you see, the point is people understand conflict because they understand that they are sending people that people don't want to target easily. They don't target them that easily than the other groups. So, and generally women inspire confidence, they inspire, um, uh, you know, people listen to them. And um, so if they demand security, how many men will, be, will not feel the obligation to provide it? You see what I mean? So you see, I think their voice is going to be very important. Uh, in this debate. So I think that's the way I will leave it. Everybody knows my view on everything else. Security, security, security. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and Nigel, you, you, you still owe us a, a security session. Uh, we still have a slot for you. Uh, you must just uh, give us a shout when you're ready. Yeah, we do. We do. Thank you. Yeah, you must know that uh, your slot, no one is going to take that slot <laughs> until, until we get you here. Uh, brother, uh, Mr. Margus. Yes. Um, thank you very much. Um, to Niger, I agree with you as well with your last analogy, yet again, beautifully put. Yes. Um, because the other day I was busy arguing with BG Noir about uh, the role of women because obviously she comes from a different point of view. So it's, it's, it's really frustrating sometimes to Niger. The way uh, I even I had to ask her if her experience in life has cause that to have such a view against men as well. There's a, there must be a balance that's created and the role of women is very important, but it doesn't supersede the role of men. But I beautifully put right now, the role of women is so crucial to the security question. And I would like you to continue going ahead with that uh, to Niger. But uh, that's besides the point. Um, uh, that, that's another point I'm going to make, I just wanted to let you know. Um, what I think is, What's happening in Africa is a revolution, just like the Arab Spring, is emerging in Africa right now. Just like what happened in 2011 in Libya, in, in, in Egypt, in Algeria, in, in, in Tunisia, it's starting to come in Africa because Africans are starting to wake up. What can we here do to inject our, our voice in these revolutions, just like we're doing for Ethiopia? What can we do to make sure we shift because you know, these people, when there's a revolution, come they hijack these revolutions and they always make them work for themselves. What can we do to stop the potential fevery of something potentially positive that's going to come in Africa? We need to make sure we inject our voices in this conversation. The internet in Africa coming is going to come because people are competing all over the world. Um, uh, big telecommunication companies are competing all over to dominate space. You understand what I mean? So it's going to come. We, our, the, our voices are going to be heard. It's just a medium for us to use to control how, 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 how people think in the country. As for the politicians, unless we are to stand face to face with them and blast them with fucking machine guns, we're not changing them. You understand what I mean? So if we can't blast them in machine guns, there's a way we can get them out. You understand what I mean? Through this false democratic process that they come, we can still get them out through this thing. You understand what I mean? Otherwise, we can resort to the last means necessary, which is blasting them out entirely. And I don't think all of us are ready to be murderous and ready to die, to be honest. So I think I'm providing a safer route for this, where we can exit them out of the door. You understand what I mean? So I think by changing the mindset of our people, by not relying on, on simply mainstream education, mainstream newspapers, or mainstream, we can have alternative media like social media and completely uh, dominate this environment of how our people think. You know, right now, we are even doing it right now, right now. Uh, I think we, lo we lost the, uh, Margus there. Uh, uh, Biggie. Uh, 
Biggie. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry about that. Yeah, in closing, uh, one minute. Uh, we need to close, and then uh, um, I need uh, a brother, our brother, our host, our, my co-host, um, our minister of education, uh, Nati, to 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 answer and uh, uh, close the, the the meeting for tonight. Um, your one minute. All right. Um, I'm just gonna quote something that I just found. Um, uh, just looking at it as a vision of African Union, all right? And this is written in the African Union uh, page. The vision of the African Union is that of an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa, driven by its own citizen, remember, quote, by its own citizen, and representing a dynamic force in the global arena. This vision of a new, forwarding, dynamic, integrated Africa will fully realized through relentless struggle on several front and as long term in behavior. The African Union has shifted focus from supporting liberation movement in the uh, erstwhile African territory under colonialism and apartheid as envisioned, uh, envisioned by the OAU since 1963 and Constitutive Act to organize spearheading Africa development and integration. All right, so we got a little vision of what African Union is and how they want to develop for the unity. There's a lot of articles in it, but um, I've seen some uh, some issue that we're looking at 2063 on what's going to happen to this unity, the planning and everything else. And I think we should uh, be, dissect that part and understand what it means for the 2063 planning. Uh, the first thing that we can do as Africans, uh, as citizens of Africa, okay, I want to remind you all, you're all citizens of Africa, and we're all accountable for what we're doing, okay? So my little note that I said, uh, as a homework for all African citizens, okay? A homework that I give to anybody that hears on here and wants to help of one unity of Africa. Let's start within your own nation. We need to expose foreign corrupting company, including NGOs that was expelled from your nation. Again, expose foreign corrupting company slash NGO that was officially expelled from your country. We're gonna keep a database so they do not move around in Africa and go to another nation. We're going to have to review everything what the U African Union is posting, specifically 2063. So this is a homework for all Africans that's listening on this platform and give us information what happened in your country every corrupting company when i say corrupting is they comes in the form of aids in the form of uh, g uh, digging the gold digging the uranium digging everything that you have in your resource so please if we're going to start having this uh database then african country is going to love to see oh this thing was flagged out in this nation so why should i do business with them so let's start with that that start our union right there by collaborating, so if one nation been abused for by one, we are the, we have the chance to stop them from abusing and corrupting another nation. So we don't want them uh, moving around cancers. This is what I have for today. God bless you all. Xavier, be with you, and uh, all the speakers. Uh, really, really brought up a lot of points, uh, and I'm still taking notes. And um, eventually, uh, uh, on our upcoming meetings and uh, platform discussion will bring out specific subjects and like we do it every day, but now getting a little bit deeper on what we can do as citizens of Africa uh, in diaspora and as well living in Africa. It's a little bit, uh, uh, there's a big difference. Already you got time difference. We cannot do this uh, a lot uh, as we're supposed to. So we'll have more working sessions, and this is what I uh, give you as a message today. And again, go at it, expose them, let's know about them.
Mm. There's a lot of Chinese company that's been kicked out. There's a lot of other Italian company that's been kicked out. So when we put a database in there, then you start protecting your own nation. That's protection of Africa. One love. Uh, love you all. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you, uh, Biggie. Always a pleasure hearing you, the voice, the chief. And uh, family, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and turn on the notification button so that you can get all this notification, especially since we are going live almost every day. Um, the, 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 the earlier you get into the chat, the better for you so that you don't get the topic uh, in the middle of our conversation. Then sometimes you find somebody's just commenting about other things that are not of, uh, <laughs> that we are not discussing. Um, but feel free, guys, to, to uh, subscribe to our channel, Swahili Nation, and join the movement of uh, One Africa Movement. And, um, yeah, um, okay, sorry about that, disconnected my mic. Um, yeah, um, I think uh, I'm going to ask uh, our brother, our host, uh, 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 Nati, to join us. And uh, our target is, is to get to 200,000 uh, subscribers uh, before end of Jan. Uh, please, guys, let's make this happen. Uh, I think let's let's give ourselves a week at least. Next week, let's t let's uh, 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 reach two hundred thousand uh, subscribers. And uh, again, uh, brother Nati, you still here? Yes, yes, yabo, yabo. Uh, I'm just gonna ask in closing uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, that you. Um, I don't know. You've you've had so many voices, so many pointers today. Yes, I don't know yes. where to start. Uh, <laughs> but I'm go ahead. Confused and now. I'm actually, you know, it's good to be confused, and I need to admit I was confused <laughs> at some point. I keep on writing and writing, and now when you're telling me to come back, and I'm flipping the papers, and I'm just taking a look at uh, the points that has been said, and I've written a lot. Um, but it is good because some of it I will uh, try to dissect it into topics and we'll be having more session out of it. Um, so thank you so much and a lot has been said and today uh, as the topic says uh, African identity and Pan-Africanism going back to the roots. We've talked a lot about it. Sometimes we've gone out of topic, come back to topic and that's how life goes. Uh, in, it's good that we plan out, but at the same time also, let's let the wind blow and uh, see where it takes us, uh, because it's not a loss. Now, um, I have talked about colonialism and globalization as uh, two major factors uh, for Africans to reconsider and rethink in order to go back to our roots. Now, a lot has been said, and economic and political freedom, uh, economic freedom, security, now, I just want to uh, give us some hope. You know, sometimes it's good to have a hope to push us forward. Uh, I have uh, three points that I want to discuss with us. The first one is that how can we make it? We are always like this, and we are always in the blame game, you know. It cannot be happening. And I was uh, reading some comments like watching the Hawks says that this can never be attained never oh no we are wasting our time this is what happens years back who would have thought that we would be celebrating 50 60 years of independence from colonialism no one mm. some even died before they see the light mm -mm. who would have thought that we'll be building one of the biggest dams in Africa years back. Haile Selassie said, I don't have the money. Let the next generation who is to come build it from his own pockets. And whatever he said was a prophecy that time. But today it's actualized and we have a dam. Who would have thought? Mm. Who would have thought that their second and third generation of Africans in the Americas 
would be professors, doctors, and professionals. No one. They would have thought that mm. the rest of their generation would remain in the farms of sugarcane and cotton down in Mississippi. But we have now mm. generations of Americans who are artists and wearing uh, one of the most fashionable trends and showing out their bling bling and saying, I got money. Who would have thought that? No one. So what I'm trying to say is that as Africans, when we just see our situation now, yes, we can say, I don't think we'll reach it. I don't think it is possible. But there is nothing impossible if we put our mind into it. And let's not be selfish that we need to see it in our own time. Even if we become the foundation, let us be. Yeah, many people admire the building that is uh, the, the skyscrapers. No one appreciates the bricks that are under or below the ground as foundation. But remember, the more we admire the outside, the foundation is what makes a building. Let's be the foundation. Let's be the living bricks who lay the foundation. Now, Africa, yes, at this point is like a milking cow. You know, mm. if you think of a milking cow being productive from the milk it gives, no, 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 no. You know, a milking cow, when it gives the milk that we drink, it is denied the freedom to run around in the field and graze. It is given whatever it eats there. A milking cow will never enjoy the privilege of breastfeeding its calves because we need the milk more than the calves. So the calves will be given the equivalent of a milk, but we take the milk away from the calves. So if we think of a milking cow, there is a lot of privilege that is denied from a milking cow, but still it gives the milk. So if we see the milk, that's not what makes the cow. It's meant to be so much more than milk. Africa situation is never far from this picture. If you see a caged lion, even when it is released in a bush, if you want to identify a caged lion, just pay attention how it walks. It walks one meter to the left, it comes back to the right. It goes back to the left. It will never start running a mile at once. It will walk and walk as if it is in a cage for months, if not a year, before it realizes that it is free. Mm. A caged lion will be taught how to hunt, but till then it is fed. Pay attention, it is fed. Then it realizes to hunt. Instinct mm. comes in, but it's not automatic. Hmm. So, Africa situation is not far from here. We are like a milk cow. We are like a caged lion. Claiming to be free, but we are not free. We have not realized the, para, the, 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 the dimension that we can cover. Hmm. So, this is the first thing that I want us to talk about. Now, the second point. Look at the America. Hmm. The same, same way that our African brothers are dying in the seas of Mediterranean, Europeans migrated to America in the 18th century and in the 17th century and 18th century. The same, same way we are going to Europe, they were traveling to the Americas to form the present America. They were migrants, but they don't tell you this narrative. Hmm. But now, they are the superpowers. The original Americans are the Red Indians, as we call them, the Native Americans. But the rest, just like Africans going to Europe and dying in the waters, crossed over the ocean to go to America hmm. and created this huge nation. Hmm. So if we think that we cannot get there, you better drown now. Don't mm. think of sailing or remain in the village. So these are the narratives we need to change. 
when we see the first Federalist paper, I mean the Federalist fathers, Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay sat down and said, we are a huge country and there are so many different states, just like Africa, they have 50 something states. And they said, how are we going to become powerful? And they said, we need to put our resources together. We need to diffuse small states and their powers and create one big one. So what did they do? They came up with federalism. So they didn't, they gave small powers to the different states, but the biggest state and the biggest superpower sat in DC. So if you think that democracy, democracy, no, they were not democratic. They tell, they, 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 they tell us that they are democratic, but in order to become a superpower, they denied the other states the power they deserved. They somehow monitored their power and created the superpower that they wanted to build. So let's not be cheated. The Federalist paper sat down and said, okay, the South can give us cotton, the West can give us sugar cane, so the North can give us this and that. And they put together and they did their math and built the state. Is Africa any less? Look at the uranium. You can look at, look at the natural gases. Look at the diamond and golds that we are giving the rest of the world. And instead we are giving grass like a milking cow to eat and they keep on milking us. So if you think that this is not possible, look at the American history. That's why today the Americans, wherever they are, they are celebrating St. Patrick's Day. But if you, if you go behind St. Patrick's Day, they are just celebrating their Irish descent, their Irish culture. The mm. Germans, the same. The Italians, mm. the same. Mm. Then they gave us the black african history month whatever to the african americans mm. so they are celebrating their tradition and their descent don't think that they are americans no 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 the, the real americans are the native americans but they built this big state brought in 50 something states together and built an empire mm. so mm. let's not be cheated gentlemen the United States of Africa is possible if we regulate, just like the Americans, the different governments and build a United States of Africa and put a common, a common seat for every country to contribute power, economy, and manpower, and many others. We can, we can, we can make it happen. So let's not be cheated that Africans are no longer working in the farms outside there. They are professionals. Even Ethiopians, we have the third generation of Ethiopians. Jarina, talked to her. She said she's the second generation of Ethiopian in the UK. That means that they have really enjoyed the privilege of going to school and competing just like any other Londoner in the land of the United Kingdom. So. Let us not dwell in this negative vibe that, oh, it is not possible. Nothing is impossible. And we can learn it from their own history. It was a bare land when they just first arrived in their ships. I have some pictures if you want. You can go online and see the migration, the great migration from Europe to America. You will see them carrying their luggage and all that trying to jump out of the ship the same way our brothers and sisters are in the mediterranean do you think mm. that all of them made it alive bs it's not true many died today we, we refer today we we refer a potato as irish potato but if you see the history the irish was the the irish were starving so they were they only were feeding on potatoes so they refer to potato as an irish potato <laughs> what what are we talking about so these are the things that we need to accept that nine million europeans fled to the americas then in the second round 18.5 or 19 million people fled it's a movement of the people so in as much as they claim the right to move, Africans have the right to move to the rest of the world and conquer. 
Action is possible if our forefathers built a steamship to come back to Africa. Today we have the Ethiopian Airlines, the, the South African Airlines, the Zambian Airlines just took off the other day. They inaugurated the Zambian Airlines. We are inspiring one another. We have planes to come back to Africa. Mm. We can circulate yeah. the money within our own right. So let us not cheat ourselves, gentlemen. And one of the things that they implanted in our head is that we cannot, without aid, we cannot, without their support, we cannot, without money, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot, in every aspect. But gentlemen, if there is a will, there is a way. There is a way. And let's Indeed. change this narrative. Thank you so much. And and uh, uh, um, Nati, um, yes. uh, I like when, when earlier on your opening statement, when you said time for Africa to redefine itself and write yes. its history again. Uh, yes. I'm just going to share it this because uh, I was taking notes uh, as well. And yes, I had yes. some questions, but there are so many uh, solutions and so many answers that came. Yes. Uh, but I think we, we, we're going to have a part two, uh, if possible. Yes. I know yes, I'm putting sure. you on the spot, eh? Sure. Um, no, no, we should it's, have it's okay. a part two for this because it's, it's okay. a, a broad we, topic. Yes, it's a broad topic, and we need to start questioning some of the things we take for granted. We need to redefine ourselves, and it starts with a will. If there is a will, there is a way. The willpower is all we need. The money, the security, the finance, the technology, it will come on its own. We are, if our forefathers made it to where we are today, we can do much more than even our forefathers and founding fathers who gave us the 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 the, the, the struggle. Wow! Thank you very much, uh, uh, Nati. Uh, what a mouthful! So what a uh, today it's 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 been a a, a big learning uh, step for me as well. And um, such topics are, are very, you know, when, when it comes to Pan-Africanism and uh, 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 like decolonizing the mind, such topics, very few uh, uh, African academics take this topic because they, they tend to shy away from it because uh, they know the backlash and so much that comes with, with coming with such topics. And we've seen exactly. even on the comment section with some people having faith in it, some having a doubt of it but um uh, really thank you for the bold step to come and share with us uh it thank really so means much. a lot uh to share and learn and i think if you didn't raise this and come to this a lot of those people whether they're saying in a, they doubt it or they believe in it but you've sparked that fire to say hey guys you know that awakening mm -hmm. is there that's 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 what i i, I take from this Yes, we need to wake up. We need to undo most of the things that has been done to us. And one of, it, I mean, the worst part is that, uh, the worst part of it is that when you just say, ah, no, this thing is not possible. This is, this is, the more you say that, the more you have to realize that this colonial mentality has been worked on you to say that. So it, it needs a bit of discomfort. We need to come out of, you know, some people said, oh, let us think outside of the box. It's about time we need to get out of the box. You know, mm -hmm. they said, think outside of the box, think outside of the box. Okay, you think outside the box, but you're still there. You, you don't have any visibi visibi low visibility within the box. You get out of the box. It's about mm -hmm. time. It's about time. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Nati. I, 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 I'm just gonna add uh, Big E. I know we all, we 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 almost we are done, in fact, but we are going to have part two. And I know there's still a lot of people flooding comments. And sure. uh, 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 you know, our sister Luneta, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, she's been busy today. Um, we see you, Luneta. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay yeah, she, that, she's eh? been also texting and and we miss you uh, uh luneta on, on the live chat we, we yeah please you. do come in please do come in hopefully tomorrow or yes, i think yes. luneta is also doing the book review right i think wednesday um 
Luneta and Prof Kuru, they, they, they're doing the book review. Okay, um, that would be lovely. So I guess maybe I'm she's saving always. herself for, for Wednesday. We, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I'm just going to also uh, just add Big E. I know we're done and people will say, ah, you keep putting people back. But uh, I need Big E to tell us about the match again uh, in DC. They're having another one on Friday. And for the people that might have missed because uh, he said this earlier. Okay, uh, okay. thank Biggie. you very much. And I'll leave at this point. I just want to say, Natty, uh, wonderfully yeah, yeah. Uh, put. I just want to make sure. I mean, uh, great job. I mean, I, I, thank you. you know, we're just going to need, I know a lot of people listening to you and um, some are really, uh, some of the issue that you brought up is very captivating. A wonderful job. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Please thank uh, you so keep, much, uh, keep educating us. You know, <laughs> you're the minister. So uh, <laughs> I re we really appreciate that. I really appreciate it. Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Big And thanks for the passion. good job you did yesterday as well. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. We all need to work like that. Definitely. Right. One, one note that I put is you put your mind and emotion as one. Nothing is impossible. I just want to exactly. uh, reinforce that because uh, yes. a lot of people for African Uni, it, it's not going to come overnight. Okay. Exactly. We even have exactly. Project 20, 2063. So yeah. keep the fight, yeah. keep on working. And uh, I really appreciate that. So right. just as a reminder, uh, December 10th at 9 a.m., there will be a rally uh, demonstration. Uh, in front of the uh, State Department. Uh, this is going to be uh, held in uh, Washington, D.C. again at 9 a.m. December 10th. I'm going to keep putting flyers, any flyers that I'm going to put on the forum, on the African forum, and as well, you know, uh, I'm going to remind everybody every day uh, on this platform. I really thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, uh, Biggie, uh, for reminding the guys uh, to join uh, the rally on Friday. And uh, I think now it's that time when we're doing the, when we close. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's time for, 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 for prayer, uh, as uh, we usually do. And um, to the guys out there, feel free to do it in your own way, in your own language, in your own However, uh, I don't know. I don't even know how to even say this, but we, we this is how we live. And um, yeah, and we just going to have a prayer. And um, yeah, Biggie, let's. Uh... <laughs> Put me on the spot. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh... Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for this night. Thank you for this day. Thank you that we've gathered here together as brothers and sisters across the continent, across the world. We pray, Heavenly Father, that each and every person who will join today was enriched with wisdom, with knowledge. And we thank you for each and every contribution from the subscribers, from the contributors, from the members. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all those who partake today. We pray, Father God, that as we are going in different places, we pray that in all that we do, we may, be, we may succeed in all that we do to build this beautiful continent of Africa. We pray and ask, Heavenly Father, that Africa may rise, and this Africa's time to rise. Not tomorrow, but this Africa rising now as we're starting with all this movement. And we pray in all the platforms that are out there exposing Africa and coming up with ideas and solutions. We pray for strength. We pray for, the, for their platforms to grow, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray for protection of each and every person as they go in different places, in different businesses, that they may succeed and come to celebrate with each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, uh, Biggie. No, uh, let's meet tomorrow. Uh, family, I know so many people are asking, where's Mika? Where's Mika? Uh, Mika was a bit tired. He had uh, a lot of things to do and some travels. Uh, but tomorrow, 
you should you should uh mika will be with us and um yeah you know i know so many people miss this face uh and um you will see mika tomorrow <laughs> so mika will be joining us to uh tomorrow uh feel free to come and join and to those who are, who are commenting i see a lot of people commenting um please guys join when we send the link um and uh, we need your contributions we need your contributions. you're more than welcome to join us so tomorrow let us meet again same time 9 p.m east african time 8 p.m central african time um 6 p.m west african time i uh, European time, GMT, and um, I think Biggie, you're like eight hours behind, right? Yes, uh, it's 4 40 here, p.m. 4 40 now, right? Yeah, wow. So, normally when we start, what time is it? Uh, 1 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Wow, mm -hmm. that's that's Eastern, Eastern, uh, Eastern, Eastern time. time, right? Eastern yeah. time, okay, yeah. yeah. So, please join us wherever you are, join us. Uh, there's lots of people who are joining us, especially America. We're seeing a lot of people from America. The UK, we need more people. Come and join us. Australia, we know there's people. China, Korea, join us. So this platform is for all Africans. It's for all the people that have something to contribute and something to build uh, for, this for this continent. So let's meet again tomorrow. And from our side, from me and Biggie, it's a uh, shallow. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's, a wrap. <laughs> it's the American series. That's right. It's a wrap. American way. It's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Good night. Good sure. night, Pastor, Pastor Israel. Good night, Africa. Good night, Good night the Africa. Uh, and the one that are still working, have a marvelous day. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.